<laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> We're live. All right. Welcome to Pints with Aquinas, the first round table discussion right. we've ever had. Thank you, Jacob Imam and Rob Pretzel, for being here. Pleasure. Yeah. We're, we're ready to go, man. And for bringing like all it. of this delicious alcohol. <laughs> this was actually just what Robbie had in his car. <laughs> it was you amazing. Know? I was afraid someone would say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now, this is going to be good. So tonight what we're going to do is talk a little bit about what the church teaches about alcohol. We'll see what Aquinas has to say. We're also going to do a bunch of blind tastings because I have gradually coming to the belief that all bourbon tastes the same. And I know that that's not right, but I'm just going to say it with confidence anyway. Is there any type of Australian whiskey? Not really, but rum's a big thing in Australia. Mm -hmm. With all your pirateers and criminal backgrounds. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I've never been a big fan of rum, but uh, tell us about your first experience of, of maybe bourbons or scotches. Well, I think I was five years old, and my dad <laughs> came over with some... Johnny Walker said, you want to take a sniff? And I, <laughs> I did. And that was, uh, that's actually a true story. Wow. Yeah. He really kind of caved on this Islam stuff for, you know, <laughs> when it came to a good sky. Did you try it? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, later on, actually, I... To remember that became, from when you're five. Well, I mean, you know, it's kind of a it's kind of a strong taste, you know. Yeah. It was something maybe maybe our six, but five or six. It was at yeah. our friend's house, like our family friend's house, and went over. And then I really didn't drink, you know, even through high school, I never drank, you know, waited and Good for you. Uh, well, yeah, I guess so. I mean now, mm -hmm. like as a Catholic on the other side. Oh, I, that's right. You know, I didn't yeah. you know, I probably won't do the same with our kids. It's, you know, and the laws actually are different here in Ohio, too. So if anybody yeah. scandalized that we're being anti-statist or something, don't worry, I am. But that's a different matter. And, <laughs> and you, Rob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on my 21st birthday, uh, I had a guy move in with me here. I was at Franciscan um, two days before my birthday. And I came home after a night class, and there was a bottle of Knob Creek on my desk. And as a college student, that was a lot of money to spend on a bottle of a bourbon mm -hmm. and so we we had a little bit of it and uh, had a good time and got into many adventures uh, with that guy uh since so, so <laughs> yeah. here's my here's my kind of uh here's my theory right about how how people develop a taste to whiskey and how it develops right boys don't like whiskey right this is so when you're a boy when you're like 15 oh, oh, right. and you, yeah. if you if you were to have whiskey like i did it was always with coca-cola or something like whatever got rid of the whiskey taste you know <laughs> so when a man like like I think gets a taste for whiskey, you know, maybe he's 19, 20, even his mid twenties, you know, he immediately becomes pretentious <laughs> and buys as expensive a bottle as he can afford <laughs> and speaks about it with tremendous, uh, what he thinks sophistication, but he has not yet reached the summit of the whiskey tasting experience. I'm of the opinion that once you cross that hurdle, and then you can go to a bar and be like, give me your cheapest bourbon and be happy with it. That's when you've made it. <laughs> I think that's right. What do you reckon? I mean, just think about our friend Dave Matthews. I mean, wow. Dave's, a, Dave's a man. And he is, an, you know, he's like from a chemistry background, gone into brewing and makes a, just a remarkable beer, a whole variety. But he, he's just as happy as anybody getting a, you know, PBR and just yeah. sitting back and cracking open a yingling or whatever. And, you know... All, all hats off. That guy knows how to enjoy everything. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was at Rocco Palumbo's the other day having dinner, killing quail and then cooking them and then apologizing for not enjoying the quail that we just killed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and yeah, like he had this really cheap bourbon. It was called Ancient Ancient Age, I think. It said it twice. And so you knew it was good. And so I tried that with a... Says it a third time if you drink enough of it, actually. <laughs> at least it was ancient. It was really ancient. Yeah. Like at least three years. And uh, But anyway, I, I had this like idea. I'm like, you know what? Like when it comes to bourbon, Right, and we can maybe have you define the difference between bourbon and scotches because some people don't know sure, this. So do sure. it one sec. But if the bourbon is like the same alcohol content, I don't even know if I can really tell the difference. And Rocco said, "Oh, I could totally tell the difference if it's Maker's Mark. I could absolutely tell." I'm like, "All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to Kroger. I'm gonna buy the cheapest <laughs> bottle of whiskey, and I'm gonna buy a bottle of what did I just say? Well, Maker's Mark. Uh, Maker's Mark. Mark. Yeah." And if you can tell the difference, you can have that bottle. They went, we're on. So we drove down, we came back, we got like a eleven or seventeen dollar bottle, nice bottle. Of makeup. He could not tell the difference. No, come no, he, on. he absolutely couldn't. Really? And so that now in my mind, I'm convinced that this bottle. <laughs> where, where can I point it, Neil? Uh, you can just hold it up to the camera. Look, but that one. Yeah. This one is called Echo Spring, which is how much, Rob? 
Uh, eleven dollars. That's eleven dollars. Yep. All right. This one here. And this here. This one here is called Augusta. We haven't even opened this. This retails for what? Two twenty to fifty. Two hundred and twenty. Yeah. Two hundred fifty dollars. And this one, Rob, because I'm just so <laughs> impressed that you own this bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Can be up to how much? Uh, resale market anywhere from six hundred to thirteen hundred bucks. Yeah, and I'm yeah. convinced <laughs> that I will not know the difference between Echo Spring and this, and I think that's kind of cool. Well, that is pretty cool. I am. I have to say, cause just for people watching, they don't know Rocco. Like he's a good buddy of all of ours, mm -hmm. and and he is. You know, he's just such a, a good dude. He's humble, and so if he makes a claim about something he can do, I would have expected him to be able to do it no yeah. problem. Yeah, you know? he was deeply so that ashamed. actually, yeah. <laughs> so that actually makes it like actually not more, only did I not like his quail, <laughs> <laughs> um, but Rob, tell us tell us the difference between Scotch. You know, people get that confused. You know, sure, whiskey's sure. bourbon. So I, I'm no expert, but the you know Scotch is made in Scotland, Kentucky bourbon is made in Kentucky. You won't find a Kentucky bourbon that's made anywhere else but Kentucky. They're legally not allowed to put Kentucky bourbon on the label uh, if it's not made in Kentucky from like Kentucky spring water, mm -hmm. you know all that. Um, yeah, and then there's American bourbons. Uh, and am I right in thinking old bourbon has to be over fifty percent corn? I think that's part of it. I yeah, it's something along those lines. I can't remember the exact percentage, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. People sometimes think like, do you like scotch or do you like whiskey or do you like bourbon? And you're like, all of them are whiskey. We're just talking about whiskey. It's different <laughs> types of whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. different regions, different water sources, some of the different ingredients. Yeah, but Sweet. it is a substantially different taste. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, oh, absolutely. I mean, this this rye versus like this this is a weeded bourbon here. Uh, they're gonna. I mean, you'll smell, taste. You, like if we wouldn't blind taste test these against each other. Yeah. They're so distinctly differently made, and we'll see. Maybe I'll impress you. Well, <laughs> with my lack yeah. Of... I mean, you maybe. You no, might you're exactly right. I mean, but... obviously, if I have a Lagavulin, which yeah. is a beautiful peaty scotch, scotch next to it, yeah. I'm gonna obviously tell the difference. But my my claim is just that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to tell the difference between bourbons, mm -hmm. and mm. even if I can tell the difference. It's not like six hundred dollars worth of a difference. It's like a dollar no, fifty yeah. worth of a difference. <laughs> well, and that's a great test. Is like we have this Weller one hundred and seven, which is a weeded bourbon, uh, retails I think around forty. You know, and then you have this highly sought after Old Rip Van Winkle. The exact, it's a one hundred and seven. Um, I believe it's also a weeded bourbon. So these would be a perfect comparison. Um, some people say that Weller's like the Pappy discard or the hmm. uh, Old Rip discard, so anything that they didn't like. So, you know, we'd really be getting a good taste if it's from the same maker and they're saying this one's worse than this one. Yeah. And if we could tell. <laughs> yeah. I don't I think we could. And, uh, yeah, honestly, I actually, I think I like this one. Well, I'll save it, but I cool, think I like man. this one a little better. Well, before yeah. we do our first blind test, <laughs> it would be cool if we just kind of talked about the church's position on alcohol in general. And you said that you'd been reading up a ton. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this whole last hour. You, you, know? <laughs> you were quoting Proverbs, I think. Oh, well, I mean, I, the place to start maybe is when they have uh, the book of Sirach, you know, says oh. that what is life without wine? You know, which is... That's you know, a direct quote. That's a direct quote. You know, here, <laughs> let me... I got the Bible right here. All right, <laughs> the let's real do thing. It. <laughs> And it says right here, what is life to a man who is without wine. <laughs> but then he also says, it also goes on later and says, do not reprove your neighbor at a banquet of wine and do not despise him in his merrymaking. Speak no word of reproach to him. What do you think that, what do you take from that? Don't judge us commenters, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean that to be overly attacked. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I think there is, you know, a particular delight of man that is found in, in drink. Obviously, you know, we'll, we'll touch on it with, or you'll, you'll read out these parts of the Summa that yeah. we'll talk about going too far in that. But it, I think there's just something kind of remarkable that wherever Catholics go, there's all, they always like bring up a trail of alcohol with them, no matter, no matter what, you know? So obviously, it, it, and, and of course, like part of that is, you know, like Christ is, you know, ordains himself into into alcohol, into wine, and that's that's wow. you know nothing <laughs> nothing light. But I mean, just the fact that Irish monks made whiskey and then they brought it down to those that they were going on mission with in Scotland, they made scotch from that. That uh, 
uh, you know, Saint uh, Junipero Serra when he, with his Franciscans as he's going over to California. He he brings and his Franciscans bring the first wine grapes over to California. <laughs> they start it all up, wow. and then after Prohibition, everything gets started again with a uh, De La Salle brother who's teaching at schools, and you know, there you go, Napa Valley created just like that. Is that right? Yeah, no kidding. And so, and and even <laughs> modern beer, you know, and uh, sure, okay. You know, the Egyptians get credit for creating <laughs> beer. We'll give that to them. But the modern techniques were all, you know, constructed in monasteries. You know, there mm. it, it is just a little bit eerie even, and the list can go on and on for quite some time. It is just a little bit eerie, at, you know, how Catholics seem to revolve around drink. And, and, you know, I think there's some good reasons for that, some that are fitting, you know. And, uh, and we, anyways, we can talk about now, those through uh, the evening. Uh, well, all right. Well, what do we? What do we? Maybe I was going to say more, but I would actually really want to do a taste test. And I wonder if we should just begin with the two big yeah. guns. I'll try them, <laughs> and I'll let you know if I can tell the difference between Echo Spring, eleven dollar yeah. bourbon, and whatever else you want to give me. You yeah, can't I, spit it out on us, though. I would say either Buckner's or Old Rip. I, I'm leaning towards Buckner's because it's unopened, and I'm really curious. <laughs> well, sure. You want to do it? Sure, oh, we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you can't smell it. Oh, yeah. You, All right, yeah. you go so, for it. Here, Jacob, if you'd like to. Yeah. You and I'll I will shoot the money here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So he's not looking. Thank you. Yeah. So. Quick, quick, quick. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to shut my eyes, shut my eyes, yeah. shutting the eyeballs. We're, we're going to go real light on these. And we're going to do Oh, absolutely. Okay. I just want to yeah. I just want to let it. And we'll, oh, yeah. And, and here's, here's like a pro tip. If people are out there and they're getting into bourbon and, uh, you know, they, they want to know how to enjoy it. Here's something a priest once said to me. I thought it was good advice. He said, you don't drink whiskey, you taste it. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're drinking whiskey, just remember that. Just lay it on your tongue. Hey, let me know when I'm meant to open my eyes. You can open your eyes. Okay. All right. So this is it. Um, we have two here. This is very little. I think that was yours because you said we're going to get really oh, light. Oh, great. And you were holding the here, cheap bottle. Let's redo this. Hey, yeah, I don't want to lie. I don't yeah, want yeah, yeah. to. Yeah. Here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that was, so that was good of you. Thank you. Yeah. Way to. That's way me, to you know. Yeah. Like, uh, honest. Yeah. One of my greatest faults. Oh, oh wait. Now that's. <laughs> is that good? Yeah, oh, that's here. perfect. Is it? Oh, come yeah, on. It is. I'm yeah, putting on my hands oh, yeah, here. It's really perfect. Okay. Just... Say, yeah. we're oh, gonna... yeah. okay. Say we're not going to open them. Yep. All right. So here are two glasses. I already think this is the more expensive one because it's darker. But here, I'll shut up and I'll just... Are you supposed to... When they say blind whiskey tasting, they don't mean you got to shut your eyes, do they? <laughs> no, you, you <laughs> use all of your senses to observe. We could do and that make, and that would be you know, fine. An educated... All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and do so. Now, yeah. I don't know all the fancy language around it. I don't know what to say. Mm. That smells way better. <laughs> yeah, that right. smells warm. It smells woody. It, this smells way better than this already. That smells like kind of like a nice vinegar. All right, here we go. So, <laughs> I'm going to. This oh, is man. nice. All right, here we go. Is, are these the same proof? No, they're slightly different, but you you'll be surprised. Maybe that's 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 lovely. All right, here we go. See, I I really cannot tell that big of a difference. Come on, you can't? I can't. Okay. But the smell was, was. All right, let me smell. Let me. Let different. me. I'm gonna smell the. Really? Yeah, yeah. Coffee beans that Rob has brought over. I'm gonna do it one more time. I'll be I'll be honest with you. I I think when I saw the two whiskeys coming at me, I noticed one of them was darker than the other. And so that's why I'm pretty sure the darker, when I first saw them, was probably the more expensive. Also, because a darker bourbon just is is better. So yeah. I'm, I'm assuming from the look of it that this is the cheap one. I'm going to try one more time. Yeah, there's not a lot to that. Mm, that is, that is better. That's better. It's um. It feels like thicker. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. They, and they say there's no bad descriptors when you give your initial impression. So you could say it tastes like the inside of a sock, and someone will say, mm, oh, yeah, 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 I yeah. get that. All right, yeah. so, so I, think, I think I'm, like, convinced that this is the good one and this is the cheap one. Well, you're right. Yeah, yeah. okay. Absolutely, okay. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Like, again, that's... How many of those bottles could I buy for the price of the expensive uh, bottle? About 21. 21. So 21 of these. So I, I would rather 
be cool enough to buy 21. <laughs> what are they called again? Echo Spring. It's Echo a great Spring. name. It's a great yeah, name. I would rather do that. Echo Spring. Yeah. I think but yeah, I mean, we'll do, but see, I think if we do this for you, Jacob, or you, you got to shut your eyes now because I've mentioned right. the difference mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. site. All right. So do you want to go the same one as me or is that a bit weird? I don't care. Oh, that's a great idea. Just close your eyes. I think you should close oh, yeah, your eyes. Oh, that's, yeah, that's really smart. All right, Jacob. All right, Mike. See, now we can tell, right, because we're looking at yeah. the colors. Yeah, yeah. You never... Okay, yeah. This is going to be so, so embarrassing. you were about to drink a $400? <laughs> uh, two, 250 250 okay. 400 yeah. <laughs> 250 <laughs> That's what I can buy it for. <laughs> and then a $4.50. Okay. <laughs> 11, <laughs> yeah, 11 pre-tax. There's really, like, no... I don't get much smell out of that one. Oh, his eyes are closed. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't say I really like that one all okay. that much. That's much nicer, I think. And I I yeah. think I chose I think you chose, chose the cheap, cheap one. one. Wait. Oh, yeah, he man. did. Yeah, he I chose the cheap true. one. I think that's true. You yeah, did, I did. did. He yeah. chose. Okay. See, yeah. this, wow. I'm proving my point here, here. on Pints with Aquinas, boys, right here today. Uh, yeah. And then I'll Sorry. close my eyes. Let's also, I really didn't like this. This. Let's pull you know, one huh. for, uh, huh. let's pull one for Neil, too, cool. here. Yeah. I'll do that right uh, yeah. after yeah. Yeah. Or you yeah. do one for Rob, right? Sure, I'm, I'm doing that. We are right definitely going to do it for Rob, but Rob is a master. And I know Rob. Uh, it's like, what's the point? You build, it, build it up, build it up, because then I'll be extra embarrassed. <laughs> Can you give me yeah. the reverberating? All right. I think you should shut your eyes because the difference in the I color will, yeah. is too obvious. Yeah. I, I agree. I think that's great. All right. Okay. So you have to say which one you like better, but also which one you think is the okay. best. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm. I. I think I like the more expensive one, but not by enough to pay two hundred. Not that I would ever pay two hundred. I didn't. I, you know, that was just. I can't even lie about my reaction. Everybody saw it. Mm-hmm. I'd like to say that I have a more sophisticated. Are you palette. shocked by that? Uh, I'm more embarrassed. Oh, I am shocked. Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. But the smell was distinctive. Here he goes. Mm. So there's like a someone just blew the candles out in church at Easter Vigil from this. <laughs> Honestly, no. Uh, as you tip it, that is weird. It's uncanny. You, I'll hand it to you, and you'll smell, and, and it'll smell like an old lady I named promise. Edna with false teeth promise, just blew yeah. out. The... And as a kid, you're like dripping the wax onto the pew. It wouldn't be that mad. <laughs> Did you God. drink a lot? Yeah, it might be that. Did you I drink a lot as a kid joke, at mass? Actually. Is that why? <laughs> Tastes just like Easter. All right, this is. I like this better. I love the smell. Okay, it's very unique. And I really hope, I don't care, actually. I'll, I'll laugh if I embarrass myself here. I think this is the expensive one. I think this is the Okay, but before one. you open your eyes, yeah. how significant is the difference? So I think there's a really complex smell out of this one. Oh, my gosh, yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're, you're just got beautiful. it right. You got yeah. it right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a great, great layers of taste and smell here. Whereas that one tastes like... Uh, this is really flat. Yeah. Yeah, it tastes like you like you uh, said. Okay, but now that we know it, give them to me, and I'll see okay, if see I'm which influenced one you like by that. Try right? to get that candle smell, yeah. There's, yeah, I don't Maybe. <laughs> You're exactly right, though. You totally get influenced <laughs> by what the people. That's what my dad came up with, like, the wheel of smell, where it's, next time you're driving, imagine, if you smell a skunk, imagine coffee. And it'll smell like coffee. Now, being from Australia, we didn't have skunks. So okay. I never had that association of disgusting with skunk. Well, sure. So I went to Canada when I was 19 or 20, and I loved the smell. Mm. And I still do. And you love coffee. Really? So. Love the smell of skunk. Not up close, not on me, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'll I give you a cologne. I, I think you'll really <laughs> like it. You're ex- oh, golly, you're exactly right. This is very flat. Yeah. This is more complex. Again, just not $250 complex. All right. Well. Now that you know... You can see by the color of it. And, and remind us, Rob, what we're drinking. So, yeah, this is the Augusta Distillery Buckner's Single Barrel. So I still don't like that taste, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah that's de- absolutely a preference thing, and it's totally right by you to, I, I to a say that. Friend, yeah. he, I disagree. Um, Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend, he uh, it was a great guy. He was in the wine business, and I, I sat down with him once, and we are talking about a wine that maybe I... Sh- I uh, 
I did like, and or or maybe I I can't remember how it was something that I should have liked or something like that. It's maybe, that's probably the theme with me, I guess. But he uh, he's you know was relaxed and he just said, you know, wine. She's just the bringer of joy and nothing more. Have her when you'd like her. <laughs> 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 that, that actually is really nice. Oh, yeah. I really that's appreciate great. that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's give Neil some. I, I feel bad. He's sitting over yeah. there. I bring it over just to this first one. <laughs> Just have the good one. Yeah, don't have the yeah. cheap, crappy one. All right, let's have a look at what Aquinas says. All right, let's do it. Uh, what do we got here? So we'll begin with the, is wine even permiss- p- permitted? Um, and he says this, and this is quite short. He says, I answer that no meat or drink considered in itself is unlawful, according to Matthew, not that which goeth into the mouth defile for man. Wherefore, it is not unlawful to drink wine as such, yet it may become unlawful accidentally. This is sometimes owing to circumstances on the part of the drinker, either because he is easily the worse for taking wine, and we've probably all known people that have just one or two drinks, you're like, you're kind of a jerk. (laughs) Or because he is bound by a vow not to drink wine. We'll talk about Exodus 90 later. If you do Exodus 90, you commit to that. You probably shouldn't be drinking them. Or, uh, let's see, or it can result from the mode of drinking because, to wit, he exceeds the measure in drinking. Drunkenness, right? And sometimes it's on account of others who would be scandalized thereby. I'll give you a quick example of the scandalized thereby. Um, I have a great friend uh, in Georgia. And I went over to his house and we were having a great little kind of get together. You know, we're having a barbecue, that kind of thing. Um, And I said, well, I'll I'll go buy a bottle of bourbon. And he said, actually, rather you didn't because my wife uh, used to be an alcoholic Mm. and, you know, courageously is is no longer doing that. So that would be an example, I think, of causing scandal. Oh, yeah. That's a great example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, scandal most appropriately is defined as something that tell somebody something false about God. And so if what is, I suppose, and com- communicated in that moment is that God leads us into, like, uh, you know, actively leads us into temptation that we cannot overcome. I'll ask it. Oh, he can't tell? Did you give him Neil, both of those? Neil, yeah. Could you, you tell? You didn't switch them, did you? Wait, which I one? I trouble. I think the one right there, I think that's the fancy one. And that's the... No. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, you're right. Cool. Yeah. What, did you <laughs> did you enjoy them? Neil's man. Yeah. yeah. The, the fancy one was much smoother. Okay. So here's if you want to play a guessing game with me, uh, which one you think is higher proof? Maybe even guess an estimate. Dude, that's easier, I think. Do you think so? So okay, here. I think. Would you pass me the Echo Springs? <laughs> no, totally. Because I I roughly know, so I wouldn't be able to play this game anyways. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. Uh. You you had them both. They taste. Equally smooth, possibly. Would no, you? I don't well, agree with that. Which one do you think is harsher? Oh, actually, that's a good question. Yeah. Because I think that one's flat. I think that was a great sure. way, a descriptor. Um, I'd say that one was a little more intense. Okay. Yeah, 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 I'd agree. Yeah, the good okay. one. Yeah. So it is, it's very significant, actually. So this is 80 proof, so 40%. This is 62.5. So... Mm. Uh, percent, so 125 percent. Okay, so I'm so right. You have, that's you why have I have a major, that. I mean, yeah. that's 22 and a half percent difference. All right, so but here's, here's what I'm saying. If you get two bottles of whiskey mm-hmm. and they're both bourbon and they're both the same proof, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's exactly essentially what I would impossible do this. to tell. I would do this right now. Let's do that next. All right. Yeah, let, yeah. Do you want to you fill that while he finishes his point about Absolutely, yeah. something <laughs> you yeah. said that was terrific? And yeah, I forget it, it though. <laughs> Guessing the proof was more important. It was. <laughs> yes. But, um, I well, I I do. I'm thinking out loud oh, a little ca- bit here. Causing a so, scandal. So 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 scandal is is considered by Saint Thomas as uh, when when somebody communicates something false about God uh, to somebody else, you know, primarily through your actions, and uh, and I th- guess I'm, if I'm trying to characterize or define how that would be portrayed to that to that woman is that. God would be somebody that leads her into temptation that I she see. cannot overcome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, th- there's a good point here I wanted to read too. Um, and that's obviously something that we don't w- want to communicate to our friends, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We should just point out, I mean, without kind of having to delve right into it, that Aquinas says that drunkenness is a mortal sin. 
Um, like, it's completely not okay to get drunk here. And I do think that Catholics can make light of that. But what's so difficult is that you're taking something that's good in lawful use, mm -hmm. like other appetites, right? But mm -hmm. that's what's difficult. Because at one moment, you're kind of celebrating it, life, festivity, and then two more drinks later, you're like, mortal sin. <laughs> so how, how, do we, how do we talk about that? What do you think? So if I remember correctly, I think Aquinas says it it depends on the circumstances um, whether or not drunkenness itself is a mortal sin. I don't think it's not. So the only the, uh, do you want me to sure, sure I just sure. read yeah. it here. Yeah. I mean Aquinas says that if you intentionally choose to drink alcohol to the point that you've impaired your mm, reason, absolutely. yeah, you've committed mortal sin. Oh, absolutely. Now. Yeah. The, the, just a quick anecdote, if you don't mind. I, mm -hmm. I, I was singing at a pub in Canada once upon a time when I used to live there, and it was I, I'd go up there every week and take my guitar and sing a few songs. Love the locals. They love me. How, <laughs> how could they not? Uh, and then I had my birthday party there, and they, the bartenders, were spiking my drinks. And oh, they, they did this in, like, out of, because you know, they love me and they just wanted to do something nice, you know what I mean? Like, But I, I got completely hammered. Like sloshed, and I think I had like three drinks, and some of it was like the frozen crap and that kind of thing. So it Shmer. may have been a sin of inordinateness. Like maybe I shouldn't have had two big fancy drinks. Like you, you could maybe say there's a sin there, but I wasn't culpable for the sin mm -hmm. of drunkenness because I didn't intend it, and I and I couldn't have known it given well, that they were spiked. And he he makes that allowance there if somebody yeah, yeah that's, you know, put that's, your, that's the point yeah. I was bringing up. Oh, right. yeah, 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 it's that it's it's not. Drunkenness in and of itself is not always a mortal sin, but intentionally bringing yourself to drunkenness uh, is potentially. So here's yeah. the three well, things he is. says. Yeah. He, here's, the, here's the three ways we can consider the sin of drunkenness. First, so that he, let's say me, Matt, knows not the drink to be immoderate and intoxicating and then drunkenness may be without sin. That's what happened to me at that pub, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Second, so that he perceives the drink to be immoderate, but without knowing it to be intoxicating. And that's what I meant before. It's kind mm. of like a gluttonous mm -hmm. kind of thing, I wonder. Like you, you're, you're kind of drinking yep. too much, just the way you might eat too much. Yep, yep. Um, so in that sense, uh, he says, this drunk, the drunkenness on that part might be a venial sin. And thirdly, and this is, I think, more typical, or at least what we mean when we talk about drunkenness being a sin, mm -hmm. he says, it may happen that a man is well aware that the drink is immoderate and intoxicating, and yet he would rather be drunk than abstain from drink. Such a man is a drunkard, properly speaking, because morals take their species not from things that occur accidentally and beside the intention, but from that which is directly intended. In this way, drunkenness is a mortal sin. Because then a man willingly and knowingly deprives himself of the use of reason, whereby he performs virtuous deeds and avoids sin, and thus he sins mortally by running the risk of falling into other sins. Uh, St. Ambrose says, We learn that we should shun drunkenness, which prevents us from avoiding grievous sins. For the things we avoid when sober, we unknowingly commit through drunkenness. And that's definitely been like, you know, I remember as a teenager, I'd get drunk and I'd just do these stupid things and... Not good. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I think um, there's, there's like a beautiful thought to the way that, as you had mentioned, alcohol maybe connects with the church in the church's seasons, uh, the traditions and seasons. And um, I think seasons have occasions and they have like special embellishments to them, right? And um, the way that we, when we have a reason to celebrate, we tend to have, you know, we'll maybe have alcohol with it, you know, as a form of embellishing a celebration. Um, well, Saint, Saint, uh, Saint, goodness, G.K. Chesterton actually has that as his rule for drinking. What's yeah. that? That you should only drink when you would otherwise be happy. Yeah. To yeah. make you happier. Yeah. To be able to mark those occasions. But if you are, if you are sad, if you're, you know, you know, angry even, mm -hmm. those are the times when you know, you shouldn't touch it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a rule. So mm -hmm. like all things, law has to pass into virtue. Um, but it's a pretty nice one, I think, you know, and I think yeah. it, it marks what, what you're trying yeah, to Yeah, like a lot of those lines. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what it hits is kind of a, 
just something that we more innately do as, mm-hmm. as Catholics. Oh, absolutely. Embracing tradition and the beautiful uh, things that go with it. And I, I, there's a little story to go with that. Actually, this bottle of Old Rip is really special. Um, Matt, you were there the day I brought my son home. Yes. Um, our, our firstborn son, I had acquired this bottle, especially. They're very hard to find. When you can find them wholesale, they're not ridiculously expensive. But as I had said they're before, rare. aftermarket, they're so rare and mm. people covet them. So they go for a lot of money. And um, so I was able to acquire this and I saved it. I had opened it uh, on the day of his birth. And I made a special occasion for tonight uh, yeah. because I the rest Same of this. Next feast day. Yeah, yeah, the rest of this, I'm like pumping in nitrogen or like CO2 into it and preserving until he's 21 and having it with him. You That's know? beautiful, so just, man. Again, this kind of tradition or this this like season to have with him, you know, and to yeah. help him to appreciate that there are special things for special occasions. What you a know? beautiful thing. Yeah. I tell yeah. you, if I was, if I turned 21 and my dad pulled out an old dusty and if it wasn't dusty, he yeah. would have known enough to make it dusty. <laughs> <laughs> if he had brought that out when I drank this the day you came home, like that, what a beautiful thing. Yeah. You, you yeah. got to do it, dude. Yeah, That's I will. And he'll hey, probably that, won't. That's the bottle, right? This is the bottle. Yeah. 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 He probably won't like it, <laughs> but all the same, you know, he'll learn to be a man oh, that way, you know, uh, he'll be moved by it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would be moved by it. Yeah, yeah. I got, a, I got a theory. I want to test on you guys a little bit. Or see what you think of it, at least. So you have, you know, St. Thomas and, and, and quite a number of, of people in the tradition saying, you know, drink to merriment and no more, right? So at that point... I what, don't think Aquinas ever said that. He's often attributed to saying that. Who said that? Well... I clearly thought it was St. Thomas. Well, it would be. A, it wasn't him. Okay. Because I've I've looked. I th- I once quoted him. And okay. Got schooled you, on the internet. Did you? So okay. I've thanks been, for yeah, yeah. schooling me now You're before welcome. I get schooled elsewhere. <laughs> What's the quote? I can look it up. Yeah. Oh, you'll find Aquinas saying it in a bunch of like what Aquinas said, but it won't be true. Okay. Uh, drink to the point I, I, of merriment. I assume that it was a no commentary further. on ninety two on Psalm nine Psalm ninety two. But maybe uh, yeah. I hope okay. I'm I hope I'm wrong about being wrong. I doubt it's a beautiful, that you it's a beautiful are. quote. I've never really looked a great deal into his. Uh, commentaries on the Psalms, but okay, okay. Well, anyways, the i the idea even here it, within you know Sirach when you find that you like do not approach uh, your neighbor in his merriment, it's it's it captures the same idea of what I'm yeah. talking about. Mm-hmm. So okay, I have I can't rely on St. Thomas. Got to fall back on the Bible, but uh, the but I think there is there is an idea here of um, why is it that within merriment your reasoning is obviously n- not gone but you're not you know sitting down to read a dense tome at that point right Mm -hmm. i mean there is something where you have uh done away with the most crisp uh, part of your your intellect right so why is why is that actually okay and that's a great question and so i i don't really have a a clear answer but here's what i here's my first guess at it at least is that in our reasoning our ability to reason logically we don't actually participate with God in that because God doesn't reason logically. He Mm -hmm. understands totally, completely. He doesn't need to reason. Mm -hmm. Um, This is just one of those things where he's so much uh, above us that we cannot actually approach. (laughs) uh, Or we can't approach, but the way that we approach that type of complete understanding is through our reasoning and through his illumination. in the joy, actually, that you find in these in these occasions of true merriment, you know, when there are feast days, when you're with your friends, when you're with your family, and you're thinking, you begin to understand a beatific joy in a, in a certain way that we will enjoy when we have actually come into the beatific vision itself. I think that there's something that's actually appropriate and fitting in that. Mm. There, I what think, do you think about that, I, that theory? Yeah, I think there's a simpleness and a purity to merriment as well. You know, I think yeah. it's innocent, uh, the joy that's had in merriment. Yeah. You know, I think of uh, maybe singing songs that we all know together, you know, uh, yeah. or things like that. Uh, this guy's birthday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and I think that's pure and innocent and childlike, you know. Um, yeah. And, and uh, that's what I think about that. Cool. You know, yeah. <laughs> it is true that we drink to have a physiological response. Oh, totally. Yeah. So it's po- it's important to say that like drunkenness is a sin, and yet the reason anybody has a drink isn't necessarily because of the taste. Oh yeah. I mean that's not why they're doing it. I mean they like the taste, and that is definitely part of mm-hmm. it. But you have a drink for well, in order to calm down, in order so that social interactions may flow less awkwardly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, like that that is part of drinking. That is why people drink, and I think that's okay. 
Yeah. There's also, I wonder, I was trying to think of analogous examples of when we engage in things that blunt our intellect somewhat, but it be okay. You know, like sitting by the fireplace and having a, having a cup of decaf tea, <laughs> you know, in that situation, that's a different kind of frame of mind. Oh, sleeping. To I mean, the man yeah. who's just pounded 10 coffees and is reading the Summa. So in that sense, yeah. if it's if it's wrong to kind of blunt, as you put it, that crispness of the intellect, having a glass or two of whiskey, it would be many other things would be wrong. So that that kind I know that's not what you're arguing, but that couldn't be a good argument against drinking. Oh, I'm de definitely not yeah, making no, that I argument. Know, yeah. I mean, sleeping, I think, is the is a preeminent yeah. example is that we're, you know, none of us are doing much at, at all. You know, you know, <laughs> it, you know interestingly, like one, and one of the reasons <laughs> this is interesting in the Summa Aquinas argues that sex isn't immoral. <laughs> <laughs> and what he says is, one of the objections is, yeah, but when people, this is my Australian colloquial <laughs> translation, yeah, but when people have sex, they go out of their mind. Like it's an ecstatic experience. And Aquinas says, yeah, but like they're aware of that mm. prior to the sexual act, which is natural and good, mm. and therefore it's okay. I'm not, a, I'm not equating that to drunkenness and saying drunkenness is okay. I just find that interesting that that was one of the objections he responds to in the Summa, that, that well, sex can't be good because when you climax you are somehow ecstatic or in some yeah. uh, no i think that's actually, i make things uh, weird there no no, no. no. <laughs> uh, we're gonna leave actually uh, <laughs> uh, no but i think that is actually a good a good parallel to being self-aware and enjoying that moment of merry merriment in drink yeah i think that's actually really helpful matt that's thanks ah is this another one this is the well, that color is a lot See, this looks yeah. similar. Okay, yeah. what, what am I? Don't tell me which is which. Obviously, I won't tell you which is which. But this is the Weller versus the Old Rip. Weller versus They're Old Rip. So that Old Rip, I looked that up online. It was sixteen hundred dollars. That's what I saw when I looked it up. <laughs> I'm not saying you can't yeah, get it for less range, or more. But that's the upper end of the range. And yeah. then one of them is Weller. Okay, all right. So I'm about to taste both, and I'm about to show you that I can't tell the difference. Are you ready? Now I can look at them because they look lovely. Smells like bourbon. Lovely. Smells identical to the bourbon I just smelt in the other glass. <laughs> Here we go. You know which is which? I do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. This table goes on. That is deliciously delightful. Yeah. They both are. All right. I think I like this one slightly more. Okay. But I can't really tell the difference. Okay. Between a $1,600 bottle. Why do you like that one more? Uh, all right, let me do it again. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know why. Let me drink some water. <laughs> Feel free to talk some coffee beans too. Yeah. yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's no Echo Spring. <laughs> or ancient, ancient age. But it'll do. All right, here we go. I'm just waiting for you to set his fire. No, table you, know what I, yeah, you know what I was saying? Like, there's like a, a smoothness. Another word that comes to me, since you said there's no stupid ways of defining it, saying things, there's a roundness to yeah. the drink. There's yeah, not like yeah. a bitingness to, to both of these. It's funny you say that. Maybe, I don't know if you, you, you might not even remember, but everyone that I've shared this with has said that exact same thing. What's that? Like that it rolls through your mouth, like mm. it's round. Yeah. In some way yes, they exactly. describe this circular... Yeah, that's so funny. I, I don't remember that, but that is my no, favorite. Yeah, no, because yeah, it was a couple of... Father Sean, uh, Rocco, who we mentioned, you know, yeah, you guys all... I think my dad said There's that There's more too. going yeah. on towards the end here. Okay. Okay. It's like that stays the same throughout. Sure. This starts like that, and then there's like spice sparkles. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're the same color and everything, so it won't give it away for you if I tell them. All right. The, the one that you like better, the one that you explain is more complex, is the I'm just going to... I'm mixing oh, but, it up. Oh, wait, wait. Wait. No, but no, we don't know <laughs> which is which. No, yeah. I do know. Okay, well, I'll mix it for you. It's nice to know. Because you still know. You mixed it. Yeah, that's, you, how, that's how he handed it. Matt, would you hold this? Please? Yeah, sure. Uh, Thank you. Uh, how did he hand it to you? Like, No, you dude, it you got to just, just drink him and we'll start uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see, what a champion. That is funny, though. That's cool that I, that I, the complexity. But, I, I, but just because just it was more complex doesn't mean I liked it more. I feel like the uh, the Sicilian in um, The Princess Bride. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think right. of this? Big, uh, by the way, big shout out to Father Brian in North Dakota who sent me a couple of boxes of cigars. And this is what you like this one? I love the taste of the wrapper. And my initial impression is that it's a little spicy. Don't move them. Don't but you dare. I'll have to come back to you on that. Yeah. 
Well, we, this is all recorded. We can figure this out, right? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, they, if they could see me mixing them. Yeah, I guess I forget. We might have to scroll back. I was trying, I've been trying to follow because I type in chat which one's which as you guys are tasting. Do you know? This is really time. nice. Actually. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I think oh, I know. Be. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, here we go. I, that was very lovely. Yeah. This was the sparkles, I think. This, you know, you like that? <laughs> the, the, the prickly spice sparkles. Tell yeah, us the difference. I think in that's more price, like so, upwards of sixteen hundred because like of the rarity. The I well is usually what the latter well is forty five. Well, 45, you know, yeah. in PA or in certain states where you can't get it, uh, or like state regulated hmm. states, they'll put it on lottery up to maybe a hundred, hundred. I feel like I've but, proved my point in this episode. Um, I, I think this one's superior. As I handed it to you, right? This you're handing it back to me as I handed it to you. Jacob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You got it as well. You did get it as well. This is the okay. Uh, the, awesome. the order it. Great. Yeah. But like sixteen hundred to forty-five, it's not that big of a difference. <laughs> this is my point. Well, <laughs> bourbons are the same pretty so, much. Get over yourself and drink the Echo Again, wholesale, <laughs> wholesale. This isn't that. This is maybe double or triple what okay. you get Weller for. Okay. There's, I guess, there's just a consistently distinct flavor to this that they reproduce very well. And when you usually when you're paying that much money for something, it's because they can reproduce that experience that you had per- perfectly, yeah. you know, or as close to perfectly as possible. You know, and you'll you'll get something like this that maybe five years ago when they made it, and you have that bottle, and you have this one, they might taste slightly different, you know. And yeah, th- that's a little bit of it. I, I think. see. And the, obviously with this, the rarity of it, the exclusivity. That's of right. That's something. They only release a certain number of bottles. Granddad, but, this old grand. So just for anyone out there, you got no money on you, but you want to get a good cheap whiskey. This, in my estimation, oh, that's a great is the best cheap bourbon. Actually, maybe I don't even know. We should do Echo Spring versus Old Granddad, oh, yeah, the we two should. cheap ones. Yeah, because that's what, 100 proof? This is 100 proof. What's and that? this is 90. Yeah. So, so I might be close. able to tell, but yeah, this is terrific. And how much is that, like $17, I, I think, or $20? I, I, I think it's like 20 25. something. Come yeah. on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, you're up. Well, here we go. All See right. how we do. I'll keep track of it. Of course. Okay. I, I remember too. So. Now, what what do you think of this? Uh, okay, I had a couple of thoughts. The first is, um, you know, what do you say to those people who are like, okay, that's terrific, fine, you know, alcohol can be consumed appropriately, but my father was a drunk, and I feel like you're making light of the pain I had to endure by making pushing this in my face what's your kind of comment to that if someone were to say something like that because i certainly feel terrible for people who've had that experience and wouldn't want to make light of it of course not but it you know yeah you know the internet's weird you know because we we can't be self-selecting like when you went over to your buddy's barbecue yeah and and he said you know you know please don't bring a bottle or don't don't go buy a bottle like that's very personal and you have to act appropriately in the space mm-hmm. but the internet is universal and we really don't know the people yeah. that we're speaking to and yeah. with in a sense it's almost on them to be more discerning than it is me yeah mm-hmm. so it, long as i'm not doing anything inappropriate. yeah exactly. your thumbnail yeah. for your videos we're tasting bourbon yeah. so keep scrolling yeah 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 i i think um yeah the more personal it is the more you do have to have that prudence and you have to have that um awareness you know to respect the people that you're you're with <laughs> Yeah, actually, Aquinas makes a good point on this as well. But first, we got to see what uh, Catholic Jamie thinks. We got to bring that name back. I don't know if it's belittling yeah, or not, but it's my one. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out which one I like better. Um, so here is one of his objections. Here is sort of in it, it kind of responds to what I just said. Hmm. So for those who aren't familiar with the Sumer, Aquinas sets himself objections and then responds. And here's one of the objections. So this this is not a this is not Aquinas's thought. This is what people he's about to disagree with think, right? Someone might say this. Further, whoever causes another to sin sins himself. Therefore, if drunkenness were a sin, it would follow that it is a sin to ask a man to drink that which makes him drunk which would seem very hard. That's mm. similar to what I'm saying, isn't it? Mm. So, so like, if drunkenness is a sin, then I shouldn't even be like, hey, you want to drink? Because I'd be somehow leading you to sin. Uh, Aquinas' response to this is this, even as he that is drunk is excused if he knows not 
the strength of the wine, which we've just discussed, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so too is he that invites another to drink, excused from sin, if he be unaware that the drinker is the kind of person to be made drunk by the drink offered. But if ignorance be lacking, neither is excused from sin. So that that's a that's a that's a good point. And mm-hmm. yeah, like if I if I know you're a lightweight and I put a bit too much in because I, I can't, and I want to kind of trick you, yeah, yeah. then then I'm yeah. engaging. See, if you know it's going to get you drunk, we're both we're both culpable. Yeah. Well, and similarly, for his yeah. latter point, like if you had brought a bottle over without asking or without knowing your buddy's wife's, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, valiant struggle. And if she had of yeah, then proceeded to get drunk, that wouldn't have been on me. No, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think you're good. Um, what, what, another thing. I, have you guys uh, listened to... Do, do you want to quickly give us your feedback oh, yeah. and then we'll... Uh, yeah, what do you think, Neil? Yeah. It seemed to me, and this is the same way you've handed them, that this one is my guess for the more expensive one, and this one is my guess for the cheaper one. Okay. They were different, but I liked both of them. They were both really interesting. Yeah, yeah, and... and um, um, did he get it right? No, so this one is the okay. old rip. But again, oh. so here's the thing. Mm. They do say that uh, that Weller 107 is, is like the discarded barrels, so you're drinking... Basically the same thing, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, so. They tasted, like, different to me. Yeah, uh, you know, it's funny, Neil, I actually like the Weller better. Yeah. Which is great oh, for really? me, because you can find the Weller, you know? That's, <laughs> yeah. It makes it easier, but, yeah. But what were you going to say? Uh, oh, have you listened to that audio book? On, called, I think it's called Caffeine by Michael Pollan. No, but if it demonizes caffeine, I don't want to know anything about it. <laughs> well, you know how much I love coffee, right? All right, so let's just make sure that's on the, on the table real quick. <laughs> it, it doesn't in a certain sense. Well, it does, actually. What am I saying? Totally does. Uh, but he ends up still just being such a fan of caffeine that he goes on. And, and actually, I should should test this out. I, I, I don't know of criticism of this book, but I know some people don't like Michael Pollan. And, uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of value, uh, you know, valid reasons out there. But for this point in particular, I, I did want to bring up, he mentioned that beer was the drink of the Middle Ages. And it's just in kind of the context of alcohol generally. Uh, the, even for the, for the very few wage laborers that were out there, they were coming in in the morning. They're getting their you know, like their doppelbock. They're you know in the afternoon. They're getting another you know high caloric beer, uh, and and they're going on their way. You know once you know as the sun's setting or, <clears throat> but or actually in many cases actually in uh, as the Angelou spell rings at noon, so they had really shortened work days, but. Uh, the crazy thing is that with the introduction of caffeine, that enabled employers to keep their workers later and later and later. And so it was actually uh, most fittingly uh, known as kind of the Industrial Revolution's drink. Hmm. And guys like William Cobbett and G.K. Chesterton bemoaned this. And there was, there was an occasion when there was a bill coming into Parliament that was going to shut down or th- th- to push pubs uh, to, to open later in the day rather than in the morning as they were doing. And and he said, yeah, that is unfitting. They are free unto themselves and unto God, and they can do as they will, will please. And especially if some of these people, and he actually names women in particular, he says, if women are up early, then 11 o'clock is not too early for a drink, I'll have you know. <laughs> but I do think there's something, you know, to be said about uh, beer as being the drink of Christendom mm-hmm. and caffeine being the drink of kind of our industrial, interesting, you know, yeah. modern market system. Yeah. <laughs> when did, uh, cause, I mean, when Aquinas talks about alcohol, he's always talking about wine. When did beer, when was beer invented? Well, ancient you said the Egyptians, Egypt. but yeah. when did it come to Europe? Uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly when it came, but it was certainly the monks that, uh, you know, of the Middle Ages that created mm. our modern techniques that we what we're still using today the, uh, the so. same time as pretzels is that right <laughs> yep really no I, <laughs> you drink yeah, yeah like you're, you're having so. a pretzel like, i can't be drinking bloody cabernet <laughs> sauvignon with this <laughs> <laughs> um the other the other thing i wanted to bring up is um i once had a priest say to me uh that we were talking about chastity and temperance in the sexual realm and he said in a sense it's easier for me because i don't engage that faculty at all whereas for you you have to engage it appropriately as a husband yeah mm-hmm. um and, and and that's 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 an interesting thing i and i wonder how that kind of is similar to alcohol like you have these abstinence movements i used to know a friend she was a independent fundamentalist baptist and alcohol was a sin you don't drink it mm. don't drink it 
And in a sense, it's like, yeah, well, that, that would be easier. So shouldn't we shouldn't we just avoid things that, that lead to temptation? And if alcohol can lead to temptation, then isn't it best to just avoid it? And the answer's got to be no, because there's all sorts of things that we engage in, like uh, conversation, mm. uh, the sexual act, where we can sin, but just to say, well, avoid all conversation and all sex and let the species die out so that we don't sin is clearly not a not that an sounds answer. very Marxist. That's it? I don't know. Yeah. You're the, yeah. No, I don't think it does, actually. <laughs> pave, yeah. the, pave the grass so no one has to mow it. Oh, well, I'm th like, so everybody dies out, you know? I mean, oh, they, I, yeah, I, I guess it was more along the lines of don't have any conversation so oh, everyone sure. can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean, yeah. pave the grass? Yeah, the, well, the idea is, you know, pay, pay, put pavement over where the lawn would be so no one has to mow the grass, you know? Uh, it's just a little anecdote, I guess. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. That'd be gross. Yeah, yeah. We shouldn't do that here, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I can't remember what was the point. I can't remember. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Priest engaging sexual faculty. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I suppose, I suppose maybe, but, you know, it, I, I actually... I hold this against our American kind of Protestant heritage a little bit is, is having our drinking age so high because I do think that alcohol is actually a better school of virtues than most things. Um, you get immediate feedback with how you're doing in your life of temperance. And I'm not actually being like trying to be funny here. I really believe this. Um, you actually have this immediate feedback. Have I gone too far? Do I need to slow down? Do I need to restrain myself? How am I doing? You know, yeah, dad, how, you know, yeah. please help me along the way. Teach me. Um, you actually have a mentor and friend along the way that, that help you and mm. as you're beginning the drink. But when it when it comes to something like liberality, you know, with which is you know something we call modern generosity. That's really complicated and tricky. Like, how is my heart doing in this? Uh, St. Thomas, in, in his uh, commentary on, on evil, or in his, his treatise on evil, he actually says that avarice is never going to be defeated in this life. You know, and his, and his kind of complex mm -hmm. argument through it is that uh, we love anything that we desire uh, at all. And so insofar as we want to use money in, in any way, then, you know, we are still going, we still love it in a sense. And mm -hmm. yet we're commanded not to love it. And so he says that avarice is just going to be with us until heaven. Um, so that's a that's a tough one, and and so it, and we don't really have the immediate feedback with how we're doing with generosity. Am I am I tithing enough? Am I generous enough with my friends? You know, am I am I saving appropriately? And, and, and there also is um, an obvious repercussions for drinking too much. Totally, in a way that yeah. there isn't, say, with a young boy looking at pornography. He might mm. feel bad. You know, he may feel like that's. Kind of kind of lousy thing I just did there, mm. but he's not like waking up in the morning and vomiting. <laughs> yeah, it'd be cool if he did, but um, mm. yeah. So in that sense too, there's a kind of an immediate feedback. Yeah, I know. I really think it's a great school of virtue, and this is why you know kids should be drinking with their parents first. The parents yeah. should be like welcoming. In. Uh, I mean, uh, Logan Gage, awesome dude, philosophy professor up here on campus. Uh, he he makes little cocktails. I don't know if he wants me to say this. Sorry, Logan. Not Logan Cage. Uh, it's uh, not John him. Smith, I think John you Smith, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, his kids with Pocahontas, actually, they <laughs> would give them little cocktails. And, <laughs> uh, and, and, and you know, if any of the kids, I mean, tiny, tiny little amount, not even an ounce, right? You know, and, and if any of the kids, you know, put it back to you too quickly, he and the, the brothers would mock the kid. Oh, you can't just... You, yeah. know, you can't just do that. You have to enjoy it, figure out the taste, all this. And it actually, again, becomes a school of mm -hmm. virtue. You know? mm -hmm. Well, what is the desire to, to, to be drunk? And I'm thinking especially in our teenage years, but obviously it carries on to now. Like when I was a teenager, like I wanted to get together with my friends and get drunk. This was a mm. thing I perceived to be good. We need to do this. This will be exciting. Mm. Uh, what do you think about that? We, we, I mean, and don't try and be too pious about it. Like... I mean, I think my the first thing that comes to mind is like I want intimacy with my friends. Mm -hmm. I want an experience with my friends. Mm -hmm. I want to have something that will all kind of be silly and vulnerable together mm -hmm. with my friends. Like those things, in and of themselves, aren't bad necessarily, right? The drunkenness is, but what do you think? Yeah, I think maybe misguided curiosity. You know, mm -hmm. uh, along with what you were saying, you know, just this desire to have an intimate experience together. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I, to be honest, I've just not really been in the. Were you were you context. like that as a teenager? Did you go out and get hammered? And, no, yeah, no, I did. Never did. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Um, but uh, you know, communities are. I mean, this is this is a tricky thing about it. It's like community is not in and of itself a good thing, mm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, when Saint Augustine is stealing pears with his friends. Yeah, you know, that's not a good community that you know need to be latching onto. It's not even the community that. You necessarily need to say, you know, I need to just be sanctified and you well, know more. I think part of why yeah. people like to get drunk is they don't know how to actually have authentic, vulnerable conversations with each other mm. unless they're drunk. Mm. Um, I don't know if as men, you know, when I was a teenager, that was poo-pooed. Like you don't say to your mate, hey, I, I love you. Like you mean a lot to me. Mm. And so I think there was a sense in which, like, I want to be able to express these things, but I'm being told mm. I can't say those things. When we get drunk, we say those kinds of things. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, you know, I can't comment on it well, but that makes a lot, it makes a good bit of sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, failure of being raised, though. I think, you know, mm -hmm. that's just a, it's just a theme. Yeah, I was actually, know, I was actually yeah, told the that. drunkenness was wrong. You know, come on. Oh, well, yeah, Never. I suppose with yeah, mm. everything you shared now. But that said, like, I remember once I went out, went drinking and I woke up in the morning just totally hung over. I was like 15, 16, actually maybe a bit older. Mm -hmm. And I, I walked outside and I just threw my guts up all over. Do you say throw your guts up in America? <laughs> no, probably. Here, here's a good yeah. Australianism <laughs> for you. Technicolor yawn. That's, Come on. that's what that <laughs> vomiting is, yeah. So I threw me guts up and uh, my sister or brother ran and went, oh, Matt, you know, and tried to show me sympathy. And my dad's like, no, leave him. And that was kind of cool, I think. Mm. Like I felt like that he was being too hard on me, but he knew it's because I drank mm. too much and I was going to clean that up and I was going to get no sympathy from him. I thought that was kind of cool. That yeah. is pretty cool. Maybe Absolutely. not at the time. But. <laughs> sure, sure. See, yeah. school of virtue. Yeah, school of virtue, yeah. baby. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, we, in, in England, we, there was definitely much more of a drinking culture, I have to say. It was, it, you know, after... Yeah, yeah, it's huge, isn't it? Ireland, too. I used to live there. It was just incredible. People just go out and get hammered. People don't go out and have a drink. They go out and get <laughs> hammered all the time. Well, now, why do we laugh at that? We all just laughed, all of us. Why do we laugh at that? There's something charming about it. Because I think you've gone past the point of enjoyment. No, you no, know, no, but you're you laughing. Know? Like, yeah. we all laughed. When I say... Irish drinking. There's a charm to that. But well, I'll tell you this: when I lived in Ireland, well, I wasn't actually referring to going out and getting smashed. Like in, okay. like, er, that's not in, what, like, what was the chuckle? Chapter. What was the chuckle? Oh, you know, when you said when I first brought up like there's more of a drinking culture in England. Yeah, yeah. When mm. I was bringing that up, I wasn't saying referring to everybody. You know, uh, starting knitting their Technicolor yarn or whatever. Okay. You say. No, Technicolor <laughs> yawn, yarn, yarn. <laughs> oh, I got you. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, it makes no sense. Um, but just let me quickly finish yeah, yeah. this point. Yeah, That's yeah. to say, in Ireland, I remember just it just devastated families. Like mm. we lived in the Gaeltic, the Gaelic-speaking area, one of the two main Gaelic-speaking areas of Ireland and Donegal, and every single family had an alcoholic in it, and it was brutally sad. It was just awful. Hmm. And I remember being, you know, hearing like the Irish drinking, they love the drink. And we say that, and maybe it's because we laugh because we think of it in the kind of merrymaking sense, like the good, healthy sense. But when I was there and I just saw the alcoholism, it was so unappealing. Mm -hmm. It was gross. It was really gross. Mm -hmm. I had in mind uh, college students going out and getting smashed when you said it. Yeah. Mm. You know, and I do think that's a bit funny. Yeah. You know, because they're going out for enjoyment. And yet they've gone past the point. I mean, every man knows that at one point you've you've gone past the part, gone past the part of happiness. Yeah, you know, and, you know. and, and, and into misery. Neil, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, well, I have a lot of things right on around my head. What I thought what you said earlier, Jacob, was really interesting when you were talking about like a, it's the sacrifice of losing your higher faculties. Because my what. My like two cents on alcohol has always been that it seems in some way to enhance our connection with our emotions. So in some ways, like, mm. you know, the same way sitting down and thinking about your emotions, if you have like a drink, it can help you get more in touch with the things that you're kind of feeling on a deeper emotional level. And I think that goes with all the, you know, drinking with friends it can bring us closer because everyone's, you know, more e ready, can more readily share their emotions. But it seems to also like, get rid of a lot of inhibitions too and a lot of like higher right. functionings and decision making um but yeah i think that the reason why it seems so so um you know why it, it gets a chuckle 
is because it's an interesting sin in that it's not one which always is obviously outwardly destructive. Yeah. Um, so there's not always an out. It's like you think of like drinking and driving. It's like there's nothing that's ever really like fun or good about that. That's a great it's point. It's always just like people die. Yeah, that's a great point. You would never be like, yeah, right. he loves to get drunk right. and drive. You <laughs> would never go, ha, ha, ha. That's a great point. But yeah. the, the soul part of that would be it doesn't matter whether you hit someone. It's always going to be killing your soul. So that would be the, you know, the uh, 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 a also deeply gravitas thing. So I think with the drinking, there's that deep gravitas thing of it having the possibility of all these awful things happening and therefore being a, a sin. But there's also, you know, good which comes out of it at the same time. There's joy. There's a connection to the emotions, yeah. even when people are drunk. Uh, so, you know, not to say just because it's a, a sin, nothing good can come of it. Right. But I think that there is that other side to it, which is it, it's, you know, it's clearly given as an example of a mortal sin in the catechism. Yeah. So it's a destructive thing. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good insight. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I, I want to try this Blanton's. Yes, yes. Um, Blanton's has this sort of uh, mystique about it. And it, the box does too here, if you would observe with me. Yeah, if you have a beautiful you, presentation. That camera will you show that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it beautifully presented. Um, well, actually, uh, the really neat thing about Blanton's is uh, that there is a different racehorse with a letter to spell out each letter of the word Blanton's. Really? Yeah, and so you'll people there's a, a very large, you know, community around collecting bottles and getting the chance at collecting each bottle to spell the word Blanton's. And they're <laughs> that they're is terrific. Yeah. It's and like you can go to yeah. McDonald's and try and get all the toys, you know? Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and Blanton's makes a racetrack, you know, that you can put your parks oh. in. You know, so there's a novelty to it, yeah. People uh, just like stuff that isn't mass produced. Right. There's yeah. You and, know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 And I know this is mass produced, <laughs> but there's a sense in which it's unique. It people, is. People just like that. So mm -hmm. this is the coolest part. They'll handwrite the uh, the bottle number. They'll handwrite the batch number, the date that it was bottled. That's they're, like, cool. Pulled out of the barrel. You know, from the warehouse. Was. Yeah, that too. Yeah. It did. Yeah, yeah. That that's yeah. a real nice bottle there. Um, yeah, and uh, the funny thing actually with that uh, that Augusta. Um, when I was at the store picking it out, he said, oh, I have two different um, barrels. And, and I said, oh, what do you mean? He said, I actually have two different barrels and they're different proofs. So I was able to look up the, the distinct barrel and the, someone had written taste differences between the barrels. I just picked that one because it sounded more interesting to me. Interesting, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is Blanton's. Um, also, a little bit difficult to find. Um, it's actually made by the same makers. Uh, it's out of Buffalo Trace Distillery, so you have oh, Buffalo yeah. Trace here. Sazerac okay. owns all of that and many more. Um, Old Rip, like all of these are uh, Weller, you know, yeah. uh, Eagle Rare, like they're all from that same family. Um, and there's I, this real great wax in it. That's nice. Yeah. Hey, I got a, I got a question. I think this kind of feeds into what you do at New Polity somehow, hmm. is that if, if we looked at this bottle here with the handwriting of the batch number, the bottle number, etc., and we looked closely and discovered that it was actually printed but made to look as <laughs> if it were written, we yeah. would all be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Totally. What is that? <laughs> uh, fraud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> being lied to, being tricked, is that what I we think don't so. like? so, yeah. I mean, there's something, and not all of this is, is wrong, but I think whenever there's something hidden, um, we feel like we've been, uh, well, this is actually true on even on an intimate level. When when something is hidden from us, there, we haven't actually entered. I kind of want to just have some, just to have some. I'm tired of the blind taste, okay. actually. We you all know I can't tell can the difference. Can you fill me up with that? Second? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's just, let's just have yeah, a little yeah. bit. I mean, unless you were hoping to have a couple others as well, I can give you a glass of it. Or oh, Yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a glass of that. Okay, great. Just a little. Yeah, no, um, I, think, yeah. I think the idea is like when Thanks, we're mate. not actually brought in to the full truth, we, we, we lack... We feel but that said, gypped, if it know? was the other way around, mm -hmm. if this was made to look printed and you look closely and you saw someone actually wrote it, you'd be impressed. So that's, that's it's something else. It's it's no the, no I don't I don't think so. If so, you looked at this and were yeah. like, oh my gosh, someone actually wrote that. They, yeah, yeah. That looked like it was printed, but it was actually hand wrote. Yeah. No, I I think uh, you wouldn't was, be offended at that point. I would not be offended. But you're offended at that. in the other way around. If it if it looks real yeah. but is printed. Yes. I think that because there's something there's something hidden that's that's mm -hmm. going on. They're trying to deceive you okay. of a point of intimacy. But they're not that trying to deceive have. you if they actually hand wrote the whole. Label. No, of course not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And they're also not trying to deceive you if they printed it. You know, it's like, all right, I know what I'm getting. 
Yeah. You know? You yeah, could have different less intimate. It, but it, but, it, but yeah. it's not no, intimate, what I'm getting at, but... though, is obviously the, the personal touch. Like, Absolutely. we like mm. the idea when things aren't mass produced. And I know it's mass yeah. produced, whatever mass produced means. But but when there's a personal, some human being did this thing here, it's it's special. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No Cheers. All right, Sancha. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Should we? Should we? Should we share our favorite my, toast? Uh, my dear friend taught this to me many, many years ago, and then I Do passed we, it on to you. And guys. I've been offending everybody <laughs> with it. I love it. So we're, we're about to share our favorite toast. <laughs> We'll say it together. Yeah, all three. Ready? Uh, uh, but Ready? how are we going to do the little pause? a pause, and then we... We'll, oh, we'll, we'll try. I'll give we'll it a nod. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To, to the, the years spent, spent in the arms, arms of another, another man's, man's wife. wife. My, my mother. mother. Well, have you heard that before? Mm. There's like that second where everyone's like, you're a disgusting piece of crap. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> I thought you did that for... Uh, was it Father... Uh, Boniface. Jason Boniface. It was Father Boniface. Yeah. What did I do? <laughs> you did that to oh, him. That yeah. was the first time you were at my house that night and the I've next day. I've stolen it. You did it yeah. for him. To the and, no, no, I'm so glad you time. had asked if you could use it. Yeah. Uh, this is but the best we've had all night. You like it? Way. Yeah. This I think is, really? this is one of my favorites. Yeah. This goes amazingly well mm. with now, ribeye. Now, here's what's interesting. Oh, I bet. Yeah. yeah. Here's what's really interesting. Yeah. Jacob won't be able to tell the difference between that and uh, Echo, <laughs> Echo Spring. He Are thinks we gonna he'll be able to. We're going to test it. All right, we're going to test it. Right? All right. Here he is. Do right. your worst. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Do your yeah. worst, and I will do mine. And I just don't believe anybody. Right. I'm just I just going to go over here. Anybody who says they like You know what? Room. I feel like I'm being protected this evening. <laughs> Look at this. St. John the Baptist oh, never drank great. alcohol. I'm just going to keep him close. <laughs> <laughs> this is not This is not my favorite. I actually like the the yeah. I like the first two we tried. Whiskey is just the bringer of joy and nothing more. <laughs> all right, all right, Jacob. All right, here we go. Now we'll re we'll just remember. Just a few seconds ago, Jacob said that this was the best he's had all night, and I'm now on. we're about to compare <laughs> Blanton's with Echo Spring, which is the eleven dollar. I'd like to revel in the honor for a little bit more though. <laughs> that I could have brought the greatest bottle that Jacob's ever had. No, no, no. This, this evening. This evening. This evening. This evening. Yeah. Okay. It was the best of the. This evening. is the best yeah. bottle that you've brought to me that we've had most recently. Is that what you're saying yeah. tonight? Yeah. Yeah, tonight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we, you know which is which, don't mm -hmm. you? Know, I don't know. I don't know. You I watch do. him I because do. he's yep. he's a he's a trickster. He's yeah. a tricky little fella. <laughs> Not little. He's Sneaky. Quite, he's quite massive. But. Okay, that's the Echo uh, Springs. No, I'm just kidding. That's Echo Springs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the That's super but funny. you'll notice that the first sip was from Blanton's and you thought it was an eleven dollar bottle. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I, I wonder if we should do this with like Coke, Coke Zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll be as embarrassing. Significant difference, I, I don't know if you you don't maybe you remember this, but when I first moved to Steubenville, you and your wife were so kind to basically give us your house for three months while you were studying at Oxford. And I was making the long road trip up with all my kids. And you said there's a nice uh, whiskey in the decanter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, there's something not, like it's, also the presentation is so much. I mean, you mm. nice crystal decanter. It could have been the worst thing ever. It was the most delightful whiskey mm. I've ever had after that long road trip. That I'd was say. Echo Springs. <laughs> no, I you can tell. <laughs> yeah. no, it was a scotch. Oh yeah. yeah. That's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna do this lager Vullen versus bourbon because we all we all know scotch and <laughs> scotch yeah. and bourbon are just very different animals. Then you just get a million comments of like, yeah, I know, if I get that one wrong. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> well, here is a question: when to when to ice and when not to ice. Mm. Mm. You know what? I, I don't. I just go based upon the movements of the a moment, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's like the... I, I actually think that's like the question of when to have a cold beer versus a room temperature beer. You, I think you can pull out... Um, well, that depends on what country you're in, I think. <laughs> sure, sure. That's a factor The temperature as well. of the room. <laughs> as, a, as a taster, I guess I would say. If, if you're... You know, if you're trying to really taste the full complexities of something, you would have a room temperature over having it chilled. Um, if you, yeah, and then other, uh, beyond that, it's a preference, you know, yeah. if you want a nice cold drink in the summer or... For, for me, yeah. if it's a high alcohol content, I like to have a, a ice in it. Mm. But I also like the idea of just, you know, if it's a hot day, this is, this is my thing too. If it's winter, I like a scotch, mm. Mm -hmm. like a nice peaty scotch. But if it's a hot day and I'm on my, on my front porch, I want to fill a glass up with as much ice as it can hold and yeah. then put a couple of fingers of bourbon in it. That goes to my, the seasons of, of, of enjoying alcohol i think uh i i would agree i think a nice smoky scotch in the winter 
It reminds me of a warm wood stove, you know, or a hot mm. fire. Uh, and then a, a Godfather in the summer on yeah, ice, mostly ice. So good. A little bit of scotch with like some amaretto to sweeten it. Yeah. Oh, now, that is yeah. Nice. people yeah. talk about, you know, you put a teaspoon of water in to open it up. I've what is that. that? What does that mean? So they, they will drop a, a little drop of water. They'd say it opens up the bouquet of like smells and flavor. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I would be lying if I said I've ever noticed a difference. I used to try to do that and then I just stopped. I just wouldn't bother dripping a drop of water in. But yeah. I, they say it opens it up kind of like how you would aerate a wine. You know, you're, or you'd put it in a decanter yeah, and yeah, let yeah. it aerate. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do my ad read. Do Sweet. It. Exodus 90 is a 90 day aesthetical program for men where you won't drink any of this beautiful bourbon or scotch <laughs> or wine as Rob sets himself on fire. And on January 17th, thousands of men around the world, maybe it might even be like upwards of 10,000 I think, well, men around the world. That's just a guess. I have no empirical data to back that up. Uh, are going to be starting uh, on the 17th of January uh, all the way through to Easter Sunday. And I did it a couple of years ago, and it was bloody hard. But it was it was also good. Either of you ever done Exodus ninety? You can sit there. I can. They can I still had, see. Yeah. You don't have to turn around. Yeah. Did you do the whole ninety days? Yes. Yeah. Exodus ninety dot com slash Matt. There's a link in the description below. Check it out. Basically, there'd be like a small group of men, like us three here, and for ninety days, we'd have cold showers. We'd not drink alcohol. We wouldn't snack between meals. We'd have three meals a day. Hour of prayer. Uh, or you know, at most three meals a day, an hour of prayer. You read through the book of Exodus. One of the coolest mm -hmm. things about this is the brotherhood. You mm -hmm. grow in brotherhood. Like I can't tell you how many times, like I'll text a friend. I'm like, I just really want to have a beer today. And I don't, you know, or you just, you struggle together. I mean, we live in such a cushy uh, environment. You know, you get into your car on a cold morning, you get a bum warmer. Ugh. Like if there was ever a civil war, we'd be pathetic, you know. They don't have Wi-Fi on the field. Look at us. And you also kind of limit your technology use a great deal. I would highly recommend people check this out. If you're a man, it's not for women, it's just for men because they're sexist. Exodus90.com slash Matt. Exodus90.com slash Matt. Check it out. They also have a, a modified version for Advent. So we're in the second week of Advent. If your Advent is sucking right now because you suck, then you could go to exodus90.com slash Matt, sign up, and they've got different rules for Advent, um, different things to do. You don't take cold showers for Advent, so if that turns you off, you could try that. Uh, check it out. It's it's really good, and, and I'm a fan of it. I don't think I'll ever do it again, unless you you guys could probably convince me right now. I was just right about now. to try and convince you. You could probably convince well, me. Well, we're jumping in the Ohio River after this, so uh, <laughs> I'm still trying to get you guys to do that. Oh, me. man. And the cold polar sure. plunges are good for you. You know, I would, I would go for... You know, a few months of cold showers rather than going through what would inevitably be a DNA mutation that we would get from this part of the Ohio River. <laughs> uh, but Jacob, I've done it many times and I'm I'm fairly normal. That's how he know? became so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Think about how much cooler he was. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, but uh, Dave, you ever done it? Exodus yeah. ninety. Yeah. No, I haven't. It's kind of cool. Like one of the things. Like, uh, he said to me was that they're trying to get away from dispensation culture. Hmm. You know, it feels like in the church we're always kind of dispensing people. Oh, mm. you, you, your tummy hurts. All you can eat mm. before mass. Mm -hmm. or, well, only an hour before mass, not midnight. And fish on Fridays. We don't have to do that anymore. And and fine. You know, like I'm not I'm not criticizing people who'd say I'm going to eat meat on Friday, right? But there's something kind of masculine totally. and, and and cool about taking your faith seriously and, and getting real about it. So mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. I, I wish I was a salesman for them because I loved it. I mean, it was did you? incredible. Yeah. And we did the the uh, I you know as best I could the whole nine yards of it you know uh, I still I still opt for cold showers more often than not. Is that right? Yeah. Well, first of all, because they say it's really good for you, especially yeah. as a man. Uh, and cool. Secondly, uh, <laughs> it, there was something really beautiful about that specifically that um, like always drew me to prayer, like in the shower, in the most like just out of places at you know five in the morning or six in the morning and, you know take a cold shower yeah. and you're like this is really profound and I have this beautiful moment of prayer uh, so yeah. on Sundays they, they allow you mm -hmm. to relax one rule yep and they say you know do this responsibly don't be in don't go overboard but I remember we had this uh at my old house in Atlanta we used to have these uh monthly get-togethers we even had a time where we had 120 people show up we just told everyone come bring something to share the end and we, it was amazing but well, the reason I'm bringing this up is me and the four other fellows who did Exodus 90 with me, we all kind of broke away from the crowd and sat oh, down yeah. on this bench and all had our little drink together 
just the one drink. But there was something so bonding about that, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, it's kind of cool. Would you mind shutting that window? It's kind of cool, like isn't it? Die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, as I'm actively sweating. <laughs> Are you? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very warm-blooded. <laughs> That's why he wants to jump in the river. Showers, you know? yeah, the river. That's yeah. right, yeah. I, yeah. Well, is you know, the, the cold showers was a thing. So one one of the random things that I was looking at before we we, we joined here tonight, um, apparently alcohol like lowers your testosterone. Talk level. about that. I well I know very little. I'm not That's a scientist. It. There it is. I talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not sub- not substantially, but uh, you know, kind of regular drinks. Would do that, you know, a fair bit. So wow. I think that was that's kind of. I don't know what to make of that, mm. you know, there because there's um, not that it matters all too much, uh, but the uh, but the, I think we're like talking about this culture of masculinity, uh, you know, that's, it's funny that's that dying masculinity and stuff like that. is associated with drinking so much, right? People are like, you having a drink, you yeah. have a drink, and the fact that it lowers your testosterone it's is just crazy. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, but well, it makes sense in a, in a certain regard because you know, yeah, well, you know the fullness of masculinity is found in virtue, and so yeah. you know going overboard is, is you're defeating that. Yeah. And there's actually like a physical sign of that. Yeah, within within excessive drinking. I got a question for you, but I want to let people know in the live chat. We're going to take some questions. So mm-hmm. if you're in the live chat right now, or if you're watching this live, uh, put a question. If you at pints with Aquinas, that'll be easier to see them. And we'll start reading your questions soon. But I, I got a question for each of you. I want each of you to answer this. If you could only drink one type of alcohol for the rest of your life, uh, and I don't mean whiskey, like scotch, bourbon, like one particular drink, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Am I, have I made that clear enough? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. For the rest of your life, what would it be, Neil? Um, for me, I'd say, honestly, it'd be beer. Because for me, <laughs> beer was, question so, mark. Well, I, I used to get soda a lot when I was young, and then I decided at one point that this is just like a kind of like a milkshake with every meal that I'm having. So I'm going to just do water. Yeah, and it's going to be like a special thing to do soda because it is a lot of sugar. Like yeah, on yeah. paper, it's a lot. So for me, when I drink beer, it's because I like like I think that they can get pretty complex and pretty uh, intricate and interesting to drink, and there's a lot of variety across beers. But it's also um. Like you get a sugar rush too with it, so it's like drinking like soda <laughs> at the same time as as you know. So I, it's like a two for one experience that I really like. All right, let me press you here and say, what type of beer? You only get one type of oh. beer for the rest of your life. What would it be? What's tough about this so is like, you might change your opinion in five years. You might your palate might change yeah. entirely. But so like one type of beer. Is when I say type, I don't mean a brand. I mean like IPA, stout, right. porters, okay. lagers. I think like a like a uh, I want to say like an ale, not an IPA, not like the like super hoppy ones. Mm-hmm. But I don't love stouts as much. You know, it depends on the day, it depends on the season. Yeah. Um, but I think that like just a, a sweet ale, like a I don't know. I've had some that are basically just fancy like blue ribbons that I really like, and I think of that as like the quintessential ale ale. Yeah. So yeah. Whatever hmm. that is. Okay. Yeah. Sweet, Rob. What about you? <laughs> yeah, this is easy for me. I would say. And I'll give a specific shot. I'd say IPAs. Um, mm-hmm. Not because I'm a huge fan of them necessarily over other things, but for the longest time now, uh, my dad and I have been splitting. We'll go and we'll split one and just one in, in the night and we'll describe it to each other and really enjoy it together. I love and, your relationship with your dad, by the way. It's yeah, so cool. I, I do too. I'm so blessed. Yeah. yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear up. You know, uh, hmm. it, we've been making beers together now, mostly, well, so far. IPAs, I guess, yeah, and we grow hops together and things like that, and it's just like it's such a beautiful relational thing. Um, so you'd forsake bourbon, vodka. I would. I would for that. Why? Well, not here's the thing: I would that. forsake that experience with my father if I if I, I if I gave up beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I've hmm. recently been. He's been enjoying tasting, um, you know, Lagavulin and other things like that with me. But it, it started with beer, and so I wouldn't. I wouldn't so want to take that away from. Uh, yeah, us, yeah. you know. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Jacob, Habibi. Yeah, I, I might. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, might. 
I, I might have to say beer as well. I'm reminded though of that, you know, we should great, say that. great verse. I think, I think it's a verse, you know, that in wine there's truth, in, in beer veritas? there is freedom, ah. and in water there's bacteria. You know? <laughs> 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 but uh, so, yeah, I'd either go for, for truth or freedom, probably freedom. Yeah. <laughs> so beer, huh? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but we should point out that you're starting a brewery here in Steubenville. Mm, I'm excited and if about people it. are watching right now and they're working from home and they're looking for a good Catholic community to move to, they could move here and uh, tell us a little bit about your brewery. This isn't meant to be an ad, but yeah. I just thought I'd tell you, it's cool that you're starting one. Well, we are we are starting one. It's just on the other side of the street that we're on. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be kind of a uh, Belgian Trappist style. We're going to be able to have a real place for for people to to gather. The Nelson's across the street was the first first place that we really had in town, and um, we're trying to actively give people productive property to have something a company that they call their own. So we're we're starting as a uh, where where real profits will be shared equally amongst amongst all of our our workers. And, That's so cool. Um, so hopefully, um, people will actively be able to exercise some creative control over it as well i think people have to be raised up into ownership it's, uh, as well but um but i'm looking forward to name having the name of the brewery well no no it's a perfect it's a perfect time it's, it's it, we're gonna name it uh ambrose brewing company yeah. tomorrow is his feast day nice. um it's uh our, our main brewer our, uh, has a has a great devotion to, to saint ambrose my beloved godfather died on saint ambrose's feast day um, so pray for Walter tomorrow, if you yeah. would. And mm. uh, we're really excited to have all the debates from Pints with Aquinas there. And, and you're not going to have great. televisions, too. Oh, of course not. Which yeah. is just beautiful. <laughs> uh, creating a space where people can sit and be together. Large bookshelves, you know. Oh, I'm you so know, proud cozy. of you, man. Get I your can't wait. Box. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> now, if I was to answer that question, yeah, the first thing that came to my mind was wine. Like a nice yeah. Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. I like the kind of light red. Yeah. Mm. It's nothing nice about wine. You can enjoy quite a bit of it without, I think, feeling the effects. Like you could have a couple of glasses, like back when my wife was healthier, we'd split a whole bottle and neither of us would feel you yeah. know, too bad. Yeah. We just feel great. You feel great so yeah. I like wine. There's something beautiful about wine. Yeah, if I could But it's choose, hard to say. It's like in a summer, beer. like a summer day. What am I gonna do? Have a glass of wine like a loser, you know? <laughs> but wine is nice on a summer day. I don't know, man. Yeah. I th I'm gonna say wine. Wow, I just shocked myself. I would say wine. if. You will allow me any kind of red, <laughs> not even white. You know, because oh, I don't like white. Well, you know, by your own like criteria, you'd have to pick one. Though. I do. I'd say yeah. Pinot Noir right now. Okay. Would you? Yeah. 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 That's a yeah. Great I'm choice. over the cab. They're too gritty, too dark, too yeah. thick. Yeah. You can have it warm the, or cold too. Do so. you know my warm or cold? What Pinot Noir? I'm yeah, saying I, you could. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You so could. you could have in summer or winter. Yeah. There you go. I'm gonna say wine. That's crazy. <laughs> um, you know, my wife and I were in Australia a couple of years ago, and we were flying to New Zealand. And we had a Sauvignon Blanc, mm -hmm. and I hate white wine. Like I've never liked it. It just kind of I don't know. I've heard some people describe it as yes. the wine for people yeah. who don't like wine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so they they gave us one of these Sauvignon Blancs, and, and I sat there, and I just I was on a plane, and my wife and I were like, I have never tasted anything like this. It was the most delicious, floral, complex, refreshing drink. Wow. Yeah. What airlines, man. <laughs> yeah, New Zealand uh, Air or whatever they are. But um, yeah, so that's so you if, if you're out there and you like wine and you, you're open to white, try a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand because mm. they're, golly, delicious. Cool. Go New Zealand. You know, I think w another, just another thought. I'm just kind of thinking along here with why Catholics like alcohol so much. And I think it has to do with something like we like the joys worth suffering for. Uh for, like it, it takes something like the the killing of grapes, the killing of grain that actually makes something reveal its true flavor, and uh, you know, and, and, and whether than just like a chemical cocktail of a soda or mm -hmm. um, or 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 even just juicing something, um, there is uh, I, th I think there's and, and there's something also obviously fitting with that with wine and and Christ's selection to mm -hmm. see that it's it's symbolic. Um, insofar as it in its in itself kind of hints at what it is and uh insofar it's as it's his sacrificial drink uh, too mm. but it has been crushed it has been tried it has been you know has suffered 
in a sense. As yeah, well. Christ's first miracle was to make alcohol. I don't say that flippantly. That is actually just what happened factually. Mm-hmm. And it, it, the the response that you get from some Protestants, obviously many Protestants drink beer, but there's there's a fringe minority of people there and who would seek to demonize it. It, it's like I don't, all of your answers are just so unconvincing. Like I even I even hear people try to say like, "Well, grape juice, it's what it was," or something silly like that. But, but it wasn't. That's not even no, true. No, it was not. Still no, it's just yeah. But you you quoted Ecclesiasticus, didn't Sirach. you? Sirach. Which one is? Isn't Sirach sometimes called? You got Ecclesiasticus and in in Syriac, but well, now I'm because questioning all my, my the, well, Catholic the, self. Uh, the reason I say this is because uh, Aquinas has said contra. He quotes two scripture verses to show that one can drink alcohol. The first is, and he doesn't quote. No, it is Ecclesiasticus. You're right. Yeah, he, he doesn't. He doesn't um, quote. Well, so Aquinas quotes what you just quoted. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, yeah, I went to chapter 31 Aquinas because quoted, of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Aquinas <laughs> quoted Jacob. Yeah. yeah, but like he doesn't quote John 2, which is interesting. That never comes into discussion. It could have, but it doesn't. But his said contra is like, did I say something wrong there? Because it wasn't supposed to be funny. The first thing he quotes is Timothy. Like, like Paul suggests drinking wine. Yeah. You know, he, so he, the said contra is, the, 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 so to somebody who would say you should never drink alcohol, it's always a sin, shouldn't, yeah. The apostle says, do not Still drink water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy frequent infirmities. And it is written, Ecclesiasticus, wine drunken with moderation is the joy of the soul and the heart. Yeah. But to that point I made earlier, the reason it's a joy to the soul and the heart isn't because it tastes so good. It's because of the physiological effect it has. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? I think I think it can be both. At least personally, my both, experience yeah. is both. As I shared, like with what my experience with my father is, is like, you you could take away the beer and we could enjoy something else together. Like we do, we'll enjoy a cheese, a good cheese or sardines, and that's still gross, man. Cheese and oh, sardines. I love sardines. Yeah, that and oysters and yeah, all of it. Cool. Uh, cheese and sardines together. Uh, maybe you just said if it's Limburger, yeah, <laughs> Limburger cheese on yeah. yeah. With some onion, yeah. Oh, that does sound We good. do, and a little oh, bit of salt. Oh. Oh. It smells like horse manure, but it tastes amazing. <laughs> hey, sp- yeah. speaking of horse oh. manure, you told me yes. of a drink that you wanted me to smell. Yeah, okay, so this, good question for, piling I up believe 2020. Oh, we have a couple questions. Okay. A couple um, of questions. Well, everyone was saying, everyone, <laughs> everyone was saying what their uh, favorite choice was. Oh, what, what were they saying? Uh, just all kinds of things. We have wine, um, <laughs> cider was an interesting Cider. Answer. Oh. Oh. People have tried to like revivify cider in the wake of gluten freeness and they craze. Have failed. I think they've failed. Yeah. They did. They've really yeah. tried to make it look masculine. Mm. They'll have these little stories on the back of cider bottles that say angry yeah, or yeah. 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 <laughs> Apple wine is great though. Yeah. Yeah. My friends have been to a cidery, which is like a, a brewery, but they're all cider. Your friend did that? Yeah. Did they do that? Yeah. It's like yeah. Somebody said moonshine, which I don't know if I believe them. But, uh, <laughs> it depends. Answer. Just a couple answers. There's not too much. Yeah, so you know, an- another thing that, that just kind of because we're we're bringing out a lot of scripture to defend wine. Yeah. And and, and actually, this is no no um, opponent of it. But do you remember that part in in Isaiah forty nine when when God says that He will make His enemies drunk? No, I don't remember that. Well, there's a part in Isaiah, I think it's chapter 49, where he where says he'll <laughs> make his enemies drunk. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and it is, he's saying, like, drunk on blood, you know, trying to coax them into wars that they will not win. And I think there is something with the, um, you know, the, the false valiance, the, the like, the mm. faux machismo that you get from drinking mm-hmm. uh, that that, like, leads you into places you ought not be, into into wars that you will not win, not only because you have a low testosterone, apparently, because you've been drinking, <laughs> but, uh, but there is the, the, you know, the false sense of prudence. And, and even like in, in that uh, chapter of Ecclesiasticus uh, that St. Thomas is citing, it's, you know, commands us not to be valiant with wine, which is another, you know, it's nothing, something to try and uh, like coax your machismo with, uh, you know, it's mm. nothing, it's nothing to make a competitive um, yeah. you know, activity, uh, even though it is something you, you do with your dudes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's maybe a little bit of that to back to your question about youth, you know, and mm-hmm. oh, we'll go get drunk together, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Of that I, foe. I have the verse here to read too. It's you got what? Isaiah 49, 26. Ah, I will make Catholic your Jamie. oppressors 
eat their own flesh, they will be drunk on their own blood as with wine. Then all mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your yeah, Redeemer, that's one. your Mighty One. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Good, Jacob. So you had, you had right. asked about this. Just a reminder, people in the chat, send us your questions. You, I well, say, send us your comments. I see that's an interesting enough comment. We'll read it. So <laughs> you go. Sorry. Let's smell the cork first. So this, for some reason, showed up on the, I believe it's top 10 bottles under $40, or under 50, 40, something like that for 2020. It's a uh, rare breed. It's from wild turkey, and yeah. it's a rye. I've never tasted a rye or smelled a rye that's anything remotely like this, and I took it back to the store, and I told them, smell this. And get me another one you thought it was because that I thought bad. it was skunked. You smell smell the cork. Well, yeah. And tell me what it smells like. Oh, what does it really? smell like? To you? I love skunk. Oh, well, do don't it. say it yet. Let don't him say smell it. it, and then okay. Just show us your facial expression. Well, skun yeah. Skunked, <laughs> not not like skunk. Skunked, but yeah, like bad. I like that. Really? So you might enjoy it. That there's a distinctness to this that's so unique. Yeah, I've like never a, ever smelled it. What, a, what a would you say it, it smells like? I. Do you want to say first? Well, I was thinking kind of bad cabbage. Yeah, I think yeah. it smells like a musty basement or like a forty year old, yeah. forty year old like velvet suit musty. that was never washed <laughs> and worn every day. <laughs> That's so specific. Soccer I love it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah, like soccer socks <laughs> in the back of your car in the summertime. Yeah, if you don't mind, pour yeah, a little yeah. bit in there. I, and great if you enjoy this, I'll send it home with you because I don't uh, <laughs> <laughs> at all. But you know, while Jerry does some. Yeah, they, mean, do great they, they do great stuff. Great stuff. To be honest, the I've same that rye, the same line. This rare breed, that's, that's the non rye, rye yeah. is amazing. Yeah, it's great. For I, the I like rye, and because I get like a more of a peppery taste mm -hmm. from it. Is that mm -hmm. am I right? In Generally, thinking? yeah, along those lines. Yeah, yeah. I like a high rye bourbon. Yeah, okay, I like rye because I love rye. But I also bread. can't tell but the difference between any bourbon. So don't believe what I just said. Tell, wait, we should blind this because you'll know the difference. Who? You get that right in the nasal. <laughs> right in the sinuses. I, 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 yeah, you can try this, Bill. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do that. Thanks. I think I want that to gets have... right up here. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? I actually, sorry. Like, just, that was just visceral. I didn't mean to Are do you that. Are eating a velvet, started... <laughs> velvet suit right now? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah found in Steuben, you yeah. know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. If you did a blind test, I don't think I could tell. Mm. But maybe I'm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, just, but you maybe enjoy I'm that. so committed to the theory at this point <laughs> you that enjoy I just it. want it to be. I know. I think you've proved it to us. I have. You know. yeah, yeah, you're welcome, everybody. Yeah. And this is good news. This is what I said to Rocco. I tried saying this well, to Rocco. You haven't gotten him. No, I can't get yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. But I think I could. Yeah, well, we could try to get you. You could try. Yeah. We can try. I'm, you I'm will happy be to. unsuccessful. No, I don't. Can... I don't know if you necessarily will. There's a lot of things here that I haven't tasted. And again, I guess my point is like, if you're like, well, this is slightly better. That's slightly. Like, am I going to pay forty dollars more for slightly better, mm. or am I going to be cool and buy Echo Spring? <laughs> Let's see. Does it have a cool story? <laughs> no. Nah. Oh, here's the story. Government warning. <laughs> According to the surgeon. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should we take a couple of questions and then we'll? There was one uh, that I thought was interesting. Is he was? It's a two dollars super chat. He was saying he's. Thank you. What's his name? It's Kerry Nevins. So thank you, Kerry Nevins. Um, he's saying he's going to get two cocktails uh, on his wedding, and he wants you guys to pick one for him. That oh, is amazing. That is great. I know exactly. Do you? Yeah, Godfather. Godfather's really good. What do you think? Well, I was just thinking of of uh, the White Lady. Because the Immaculate Conception's coming up. That's beautiful. You, you know. What's the white lady? So you have uh, it's it's lemon, it's gin, and uh, gosh, what's the third? Super simple. What is this last one? Mm. Seltzer. Catherine Jamie will Catholic tell us Jamie's in a second. Looking up white lady. Uh, I'm still thinking about it. I'm still thinking. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about the Godfather? Yeah. yeah, Godfather. The way that I prefer it, and it seems you do as well, I is um, you do you have about a regular pour of. Uh, maybe red label or a decent scotch or not necessarily something smoky um, like a highland scotch uh, and then and then you just add little little bits of amaretto yeah. until it's just Ooh, sweet enough so you, you don't want to over sweeten it or you lose the taste of the whiskey it is delicious the idea is taste great. the whiskey without the harshness could do that one it's yeah. amazing what, what's, the, what's in the white lady a white lady is gin orange liqueur and lemon juice and an egg white Mm. Oh, egg white. gross. Well, egg no, white. you don't have to do that. No, they, do you well, cook yeah. it first and then just... No, no. <laughs> they froth the egg white just so it's a foam on the top. It's an experience That's thing. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So you what don't are we taste gonna, egg white. Hey, let me think of one. A good cocktail. 
I don't even know if I know. I don't, I don't no, he only gets two anyway. He said yeah. so. No, but we're gonna we're gonna pick one for this dude <laughs> oh, to do yeah. out of these yeah. three. Oh, that's well, right. Wait, 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 months? Can you ask Mr. Nevins when? Oh, he's when... gotta put in the chat. Yeah, yeah. if he does. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Now I um, I, a, a very good old fashioned. Now there are a lot of bad old fashions. That's true. It's very easy to make an old a bad old fashioned. But I will say yeah. the steakhouse across the road mm. in Weirton. Oh yeah. They make it, depending on the bartender, they make a nice old fashioned. You know, a couple of years ago, we had a fundraiser for Mary Seat of Wisdom, the yeah. homeschool co op here at Mark Barnes' house. Nice. And it was so much fun. It was just such a great night. We, we, uh, the, the, Night was punctuated by different courses, and in between each course, you tried to build a gingerbread house, and whoever you know built the best, you know, got wild. I love it. Wild plays for the rest of the evening, and um, so good. <laughs> but his brother made old fashions. There, like it's a huge jug of yeah. old fashions, and I have to say that was the best old fashioned. That yeah, Joe did a great Talk job. To that guy. So what are we yeah. gonna what are we gonna come down on? I think Godfather. That's what I'd say. Yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds delicious. If I've you care, one. it's a cheap. It's a. It's an easy drink. It's. Yeah. Not, there's no frothing of things. Right. right. But I'd say Godfather. If, if you care about our opinion, that's what I'd say. Cool. Yeah. But I want to try yours as well. I do w too. Well, this one yeah, tomorrow the one evening. With the egg whites. White lady. Yeah. You're yeah, having yeah. a thing oh, at your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Oh, you know we have to do it over at the New Polity Building because so yes. many people are RSVP. Oh, dude, that's amazing. It's yeah. gonna be fun. All right, we'll yeah. accept my RSVP. Excellent. You got it. Actually, I don't even know if I can come tomorrow. I'm. I'm thinking. I'm hosting a debate tomorrow night. Yeah. I well, it's so. nearby. Am yeah. I? <laughs> this, yeah, I'm hosting a debate on the Eucharist. Isn't this a This amazing, oh, cool. savory. I'm adding this to my cigar board. It's uh, amazing. Probably at a five, four and a half, five. Yeah. Very cool. savory, smooth, nice. consistent mm. all the way through. Yeah, it's very good. It's delicious, yeah. Yeah. Southern draw. Soli Deo Gloria, for anyone who wants to know. Um, <laughs> everyone can tune in tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. <laughs> Come for the first Dr. two Stephen hours of the party. <laughs> and Dr. Brett Stone. Yeah, so we got two folks, two two PhDs who are going to be discussing the Eucharist. One bloke from Canada, he's a diocesan theologian, and he wrote a good book on transubstantiation. Oh, and cool. So they're going to. Oh. It won't be an official debate. It'll be more of an adversarial, pleasant discussion, goodwill discussion. Hmm. So tune in for that if you want. Hmm. <sighs> Man, what other questions we got? I'm kind of curious if there was any. Um, well, I wanted to add on to the question of. Which cocktail? Just a general opinion of cocktails? Because I don't know if I'd say this anymore, but I used to have the opinion that it was kind of like for coffee drinkers, there's the people who drink like black coffee and are interested in finding all the flavors about yeah. it. But then there's, you know, people who get the, all the different flavors of drinks, like the pumpkin spice so and so or one or two. Right. Mm. And not to like look down on that, but it's like if I'm looking for a really, really good roast, the person who's interested in the syrup drinks, like that's a different experience. So they're not going to have much input. And then I kind of thought the same thing for cocktails, but then I don't know. I've had some really good cocktails. In That's a good now, point. So I don't know. So to, just to sort of rephrase what you're saying here, like just like when I go to a coffee shop and my wife asks for like an almond milk, like decaf, <laughs> uh, honey, that kind of thing, and I'm like just want a black coffee. It it seems like it's more respectful to desire like the essence of it. Like what is this flavor? You know, it's like a more of a refined thing. And so you're kind of like making that analogy where you're kind of asking. Are cocktails just like the frappuccinos of the alcohol world? But you're saying, but you're realizing that's not the case. Yeah, and also yeah. to not look down on frappuccinos because the you know, the bomb. A, they're good. Too. They, yeah, they have their place. But, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe it depends. Yeah, what do you think though? Because I mean, when uh, when you have a cocktail, are you is it is it very important? I guess it depends on how much is in it. But are you, is it very important that the liquor's good? Well, I mean, if you're just going for a vodka martini or something like that, or gin martini, you're going to want some nice vodka or mm -hmm. nice gin because there's just very little else. That's a good there. point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny you mention that because I was going to say, if I didn't say Godfather, I would say like a dirty martini. I love dirty. Yeah. yeah. Oh oh which, I can't replicate a good one. We, we tried. We're going to tell this story. Really? Oh my gosh. I had yeah. Rob over the other night and I'm like, dude, let's make dirty martinis. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we got some, uh, we got vodka and gin. And then I was like, and I've got these beautiful olives, and they were green olives from, Fe from Frederico's. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great shop. Oh, my gosh. Great shop. It's just extraordinary oh. shop. And yeah. it had blue cheese in the middle. Get and their trini. Their trini. It's What's amazing. That? It's a type of pasta cut. You know, oh. it's amazing. Never had anything better so in my life. So me being silly and not having much experience with this, just assumed that like oil, like olive oil, like uh, <laughs> juice was the same thing <laughs> as whatever came with the... 
with the green olive. So I'm tipping this in, and basically it was like drinking vodka and yeah. olive oil. So that's the problem is <laughs> these olives, the olives came in oil, not in olive juice. Yeah. And so we try to shake the thing up, and it's like it looks like a dressing that you didn't quite like. Conge- you know, it's like can you just take a kind of a, a piece of mortar and just kind of no? Get it out I mean, there? it what was, do you have to do it was to get... like you know the the liquor slid down the throat, and then the oil stuck oh, in the mouth. Oh, it was so gross. gross. It was so just yeah. it was a heavy layer. And I even went to the Welkers and I got a little shaker thing, and yeah. I was like really excited. <laughs> But Imagine like blue cheese soaked oil. It was in it stuck in your mouth. It wasn't great. We failed at it that was one. Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my last vodka during vodka martini. I was out with my buddy Roy. You know, just back in England a few weeks ago, and oh my gosh, you know, we sat down and we both looked at one another. And we, you know, like he said, you know what I'm feeling? I said, what? And he goes. Dirty vodka martini. That is exactly what I had in mind. It was awesome. It was just such a good time. The, the little I can yeah. tell from the limited experience I've had with dirty martinis is I much prefer vodka than a gin. Mm. Mm. I, I prefer the opposite. Dude, why is that? I love the herbal tastes of gin. You know, you I like do the too, pine. just not with the green olive taste. Hmm. Yeah, I think it depends on how you've had it made, maybe, or how I've had That's it made. Right. And yeah. I, yeah, I've never really. Uh, so I've had it made. The best, the best dirty martini I've ever had was a gin martini. I, I yeah. gotta, I gotta admit, I do like the more kind of girly martinis, like the kind of like coffee martini, <laughs> the lemon espresso, martinis. Yeah, Ooh, well, yeah espresso. You put oh, a I like cucumber in I it. Do, yeah, I do yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. A good margarita though. On a beach, a good margarita. I've never been able to do it. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Big chunky salt good one. on the rim. Oh, I it's love delicious. That, yeah. But I will say, like the older I've got and the more I've come to appreciate mezcal. Oh, a good mezcal. Have you ever had a mezcal? Uh, sure. Mezcal is like a smoky tequila. Oh, yeah, it's like okay. it's like Lagavulin yes. is to Glenfiddich. Uh, cool. it's, it's, gotcha. it's, it's delicious. It's supposed to be like it was supposed to be like what tequila. It was like the cowboy tequila, what tequila came from, I guess, mezcal. Okay. Um, and mezcal, however you say it, I don't know. And someone but. someone taught me this. It was a bartender. I thought it was fascinating. They said, when it comes to bourbons, the question is, how long has it been aged in the barrel? Like, after mm-hmm. you've made it? Mm-hmm. He said, with mezcal and tequila, the question isn't about after. The question is about before. Like, mm-hmm. how old is the agave plant that oh, you're wow. using? Isn't wow. that fascinating? Yeah. That's cool. So, But I've found uh, I would much prefer agave sorry not agave a ton of lime juice mezcal on the rocks is delicious and i'd prefer that to any margarita at this point it's yeah, I'll, I'll make you one awesome that so sounds great a dear friend of mine introduced me to tequilas last summer uh we were building his deck and it was hot days out in the evenings like building this deck and we'd sit the the sun would go down the night would cool and we'd sit on this like nice cool fresh smelling you know treated wood uh, looking up at the stars and sipping the, just a little bit of this. Uh, it was it's called Trace. Um, yep. It's this black bottle with a gold top. It looks really nice. It tastes oaky and cedar and it and dirt. It tastes like dirt, you know. Yeah. The, and it, it, yeah, I I had never tasted a tequila by itself before. I always thought you don't do that. Yeah. Uh, but it's amazing. Well, that's right because you grow up and the idea is like lemon juice mm-hmm. shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like an abuse of alcohol, really. Like, yeah, it's not yeah. actually appreciating it. Right. Yeah. You right. know, the, the, the priest that married my wife and me, it was, it was the night before our wedding, the evening before, and it was, you know, after our kind of rehearsal dinner, like, all, a whole bunch of family came over for for uh for some drinks and stuff and we filled up my my wife's family entire canoe with just a ton of beers really? and whatever else just a variety pack Where'd you get whatever. the canoe from was it a gift was it a no it was just they have a canoe <laughs> you know right. they would go out they're, they're kind of outdoorsy and all that and uh and <laughs> so my so the priest kind of leans over and he grabs something he goes what's this and my uh my cousin who's a total frat guy everything you know he, he looks over he's like oh yeah that's actually like hard club soda you can't even taste the alcohol it's awesome <laughs> and the priest he's a pretty analytical guy and he goes you know actually i'm not sure if i would like that no i don't think i would in fact the alcohol taste is the only reason i drink so that would defeat the entire purpose <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it, it was like him slowly reasoning there it was awesome <laughs> it's totally defeated this guy who was just pounding shots for the sake of pounding shots yeah it was awesome. <laughs> That's incredible. The the mezcal bottles that we get, mezcal, uh, they have a worm in the an agave worm yeah. in the bottom of it. And our house rule is whoever is you know to draw the last of the bottle has to eat the worm. Nice. And you have to eat it. You have to chew it ten Oof. times before you Oof. swallow it down, and you can't chase it. 
That's, See, that's the rule. That, I don't think that would bother me at all. Okay. Yeah, come, Wouldn't that just taste like... I'll mis- save the worm for you. <laughs> Maybe it <Yeah>. would. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when he said... <laughs> um, but what does it taste like? It just tastes like vodka. And it's the wor- yeah, the worm's saturated, but it's... Is it it's, the idea it's, of it? It's, go- it's squishy and, and it's so a little dirty. From yeah. it, you another drink? Buffalo for yeah. The yeah. From, yeah. Oh, you like the buffalo. Oh, yeah. The musk, I'm musty... I'm going for a little more of this. And I've got to do a blind taste on you before we wrap up. You do, so let's do that instead. Let's do that instead. We can we can take our time here, but... yeah. Yeah. Um, where, being from a str- what is this though? Sorry, oh no, oh, so, talking. You yeah, talking. Uh, Catholic yeah. Jamie bought that for me. Oh, Catholic Jamie, you're the man. Yeah, that's the best one I've had in uh, Georgia. I don't know. Oh, and yeah, he I can't tell the difference between Echo Springs and this one. <laughs> <laughs> should, we a, should we do a test on you to see? Yeah, I'm up for it. I'm up for it. <laughs> You, you, you want to get those two glasses for him and yeah, see if we can yeah. do one more? Oh my gosh, this says liter on it. <laughs> That's how unclassy this <laughs> drink is. Right, yeah. no, no, it's it's good. Good. Right there, yeah. This liter is, is bigger than Echo Spring on the on the neck. That's fabulous. So I'm making a grog glass here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which, again, doesn't matter if it's all bourbon, it's all the same. Yeah. All right, here we go. So this is for yeah, the, you're saying okay. the bottomless and bottles. This is for Catholic matter. Jamie. We're doing our $11 <laughs> Echo Spring. With what he says is the best bourbon he's had. This okay. is me just okay. shaming yeah. people. Yeah. That's what. what <laughs> actually, let me get this is scandalizing. Actually, yeah, yeah, <laughs> shaming people. I do have kind of like a counter take, Matt. To that is that I yeah. think that it's it's because I've watched videos before that are really interesting where they have like sommeliers come in and they and they make them taste two different lines and they have to tell mm-hmm. which one's the thousand dollar one and they're yeah. talking oh. about like oh this one's much? Oh, sure. it's very yeah. complex yeah. and it's not oh, that they're wrong. Don't they don't they reveal at the end of the video that they're both box ones. Neither of them are the nice ones. Wow, one. yeah. So it's this interesting idea that. of like yeah. the value can make us taste it better <laughs> yeah. because it makes us focus <laughs> in more on it. Yeah. Yes. And I would argue that the expensive fancy stuff oh, is like which one, it? if you're on a desert island, which one would have more yeah. to it, if that makes sense? More which to one, it? Like more depth. Yeah. If you had to drink it more than once, All right, here we go now. go deep into to, it. You know which is which there, Rob. So I just for those at home, we've got an $11 oh. Echo Spring, <laughs> the best bourbon around. Man, I should have Echo oh. Spring pay. <laughs> and then and then the best bourbon uh, Catholic Jamie said he's ever had and we'll see don't oh yeah alright go on yeah yeah what's that one yeah, it smells like that mic's on right they can hear you yeah oh, yeah we gotta get a camera for Catholic Jamie turn on the webcam so hmm <laughs> you know the can you tell oh sorry so he can't really tell because yeah, right he's got a confused face for everybody this is my point the point i have continually and consistently <laughs> okay, so what, and accurately what's the point made of your point, Matt? <laughs> the point of my point is that i am superior yeah. That's, <laughs> I, I wish you would have <laughs> drawn your the same just get any bottle <laughs> Go and buy an $11 bottle. It's exactly the same. You wouldn't know the difference. And if you did know the difference, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Do you yep. make the same claim about all scotches, though? No. That, okay, Lagavulin mm. 16 is the greatest whiskey I have ever had in my life. I remember, I the first time I bought Lagavulin was when it was cheap, because I'm 100 years old. So it was back when I worked at Catholic Answers in San, San Diego, and I, and I bought a bottle from uh, uh, Costco for about 60 bucks. Now they're about 120, depending on where you get it. A bit cheaper. but And I sat on my front porch, and I, I, I it was a mystical experience. I mean, it was just <laughs> terrific. I absolutely agree. Do you? Yeah. It is the greatest. <laughs> and then you and I have tried some different Lagavulins, like the Ron Swanson yeah, edition. So, yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't as good, aged. was it? No, it took yeah. away the smoke, yeah. Sounds cool. Like it sounds Guinness. cool. It's fun. It's yeah. rare. It's you know, fun. But, but it's... It just reminds you how sweet of a nectar Lagavulin 16 it's is. So yeah, good. We're going to have that. The yeah. 18, though. Okay, just so everybody knows, Neil's still trying to tell the difference. So <laughs> even, <laughs> even if he's right. Well, okay. he tries to figure it out, you just should so, do your ad and I'll go to the bathroom. Yeah. Just so everybody can tell here. Can they see this here? Echo Spring versus Southern Bourbon Whiskey. This is the best bourbon Neil said he's ever had, and he can't really tell the difference between an $11 bottle. Yeah, not really. I think this one is a better experience, but my suspicion is this one's the... the... Do you remember? I do remember. Yeah. Is he right? He is correct, okay. yeah. yeah. I do like this one more. So you got it right. It's, it's not as strong. 
The Echo Springs. He likes he, Echo, he Springs likes Echo Springs more. You like right Echo now, Springs I'm, more? Yeah. He likes the eleven dollar bottle. I mean, we, admittedly, we've we tried a lot of different whiskeys this evening. You know, and I think your palate no. just gets mixed no, I'm, up. Yeah, I man. think you're right. Yeah, but we all had. You had a blind test in the beginning, and did I? As did I. And we couldn't <laughs> tell then. Well, unless the first, you were drinking whiskey before. No, 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 but I think. I mean, this is all the recorded, first so we all they got. can co- correct Even me. Even blind, we got it. But yeah. I didn't like the the nice one. Yeah, like yeah. the first one, I just didn't like it. No, one of us didn't get it. I got it right. No, no. Oh, Neil. Oh, Neil no, Neil. Neil. Oh, no, you you pro- no. I probably did get it wrong, but I, I oh, specifically yeah. didn't like the. I don't remember now. The nicer right. one. Yeah. Can we do a two minute break? Yeah, um, yeah, the and then we'll we'll be back taking your questions. <laughs> Tag pints with the coins. <laughs> yeah, let, don't do the ad. Just the two minute. <laughs> But we are. All right. Hey, sorry. Some of us I just are. clicked. Uh, I clicked play. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ah. So just for those at home, Jacob said, "Dude, do you have any food?" And I'm like, "Would you <laughs> eat honey?" And he's like, "Yes." And that's why he's doing it. <laughs> if if it's crystallized, down, oh. yeah, I don't think it's gonna be possible. You'll be chewing that. Can uh, can we like call our families to like bring us food? <laughs> that would be amazing. We are working our butts off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna need a calzone. <laughs> Ooh, it's cold. All right, I'll shut the window. Speaking of families, oh well, he's leaving. But Mrs. G- Pretzel is in chat. Uh, Mrs. Pretzel's in chat. Rings, and there was someone else Wait, actually. Was it? Can you yeah. turn that light off out my there? My wife's in the chat. Mm-hmm. And she was asking. <laughs> She's in the chat <laughs> inside it. <laughs> Come out of there! I need, I need you. <laughs> what did What does Miss Pretzel say? Mrs. She's asking about Mrs. Mrs. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Let's get that get that right. <laughs> asking about rings. Ah, uh, she's asking too. There was someone too. else also asking. Oh, uh, yeah, that was the other person. Yeah. First of all, what is what is it? I I love that your name is Pretzel. Yeah, yeah. What is I what, do too. what is it? <laughs> what does it mean? It's not spelled the same as a pretzel. No, yeah, it's spelled traditionally. There's an umlaut over one of the letters, uh, <laughs> uh, and so it's, it is pronounced Pretzel. Um, the word in traditional German actually means little prayer, um, and it came from uh, during Lent. They would pass around these little little prayers, like these little. Um, bakery-sized uh, treats that looked like folded arms in prayer, right? Yeah. Like prostrated prayer. Um, and if you look, and if you trace out my arms, and if you were to turn a pretzel the way you know it upside down, yep. it would look like arms in prayer. Uh, yeah. And so the way you know the pretzel is actually upside down. Uh, it's supposed to be flipped That's over. Cool. Yeah, That's yeah. To remind thing. people to pray. Next yeah. time you're here, we're going to have a bowl of pretzels. We really should have done no. this. That was an yeah. oversight on our part. Yeah. Yeah. See, Huge if oversight. our wives were planning this, they'd be like, well, obviously they're going to need food. Look at all this whiskey. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, I have congealed honey. <laughs> <laughs> Crystallized honey. I suppose. Just congealed, yeah. yeah. You know, this must be part of, you know, the secular attack on Christianity. Yeah, they, turning they, the they inverted the pretzel and yeah. secularized it. The only place that <laughs> we've ever seen a pretzel the right way is actually, surprisingly, in downtown Disney. They have a pretzel shop. And the sign, the pretzel is the right way. Uh, if pretzel, if if Disney knew that, I bet they would turn they, it up. They did. They would. Yeah, <laughs> mongrels. Absolutely didn't. Yeah. Any other? Oh, hey, oh. one thing I got to say before we go to a question is Hello is a fantastic app. Hello to you too. Which you should download immediately. Hello dot com slash Matt Fred. I think. Can you skew to your left a little bit too? You're kind of. Like that? Shifting. Yeah, perfect. Right there. Perfect. Hallow.com slash Matt Frad. It's an app that will help you pray. I just had a bloke on the other day who studied to be a yoga teacher. He was big into yoga. And there's a bunch of new age kind of apps online, mindfulness apps. And I think a lot of people get sucked into this because they're aware that they have anxiety. They're aware that they want more peace in their life. So they naturally go to the app store and look up some kind of peace, calm kind of app. And some of those things are pretty good, but they also lead into some really kind of erroneous and bad ways of thinking. Mm. Hallo is 100% Catholic. It's the number one downloaded Catholic app, um, and they've done it really well. I say this a lot, but we used to say things like, uh, it's good for a Catholic this or that. It's good for a Catholic website. It's good for... But this is just the amazing app. I downloaded... <laughs> You're that hot. I'm oh freezing. Gosh, yeah. I downloaded the best meditation app on uh, back when I had a smartphone. And I, I played around with it, and then I downloaded Hallo. I re-downloaded it because I had an update, and it's it's better. It's better. It's absolutely better. So I would highly encourage you, if you have a smartphone and you want to get better at praying, to go to hallo.com slash Matt Frad. They, they have free stuff, so if you download the app right now, you can use it. 
But to get access to all of it, go to hello.com slash Matt Fred. You can try out the whole app for free for a month. And also they're doing daily meditations throughout Advent as well. So if you haven't crushed Advent and you want to be better at it, you could if you wanted to. Go to hello.com slash Matt Frad. My wife and I have both used it. And, you know, while I'm open to promoting things I'm not super enthusiastic about, like if there are any mattress companies, I would totally sell out. <laughs> but I mean it when I say, you know, they send me a free mattress, but I mean it when I say this is a terrific app and it's really good, faithful people. And you're going to find faithful Catholic t- content at hello.com slash Matt Frad. There you go. That was my second ad read. That was a good Done. one. Done. <laughs> the description. We have a $20 super chat from John wow. uh, Mott. I'd Thanks, love to hear a discussion John. about drinking alone, uh, often and moderately. A regular nightcap after the family goes to bed. I'm more interested in the morality of the habit. Uh, and then also he's asking about distinguishing between being buzzed and drunk, which I think that mm. might be a separate conversation. But people were talking about that earlier when you were uh, when we were first starting the episode. Um, and you were ta- we were talking about being drunk being a sin. So mm-hmm, the distinct, mm-hmm. that, that specific distinction. So yeah, really so tough. those are two great questions. I, I want to say something about the first, and I'd love to get your, your guys' take on it. Mm. Um, yeah, so the question is, you know, drinking alone, the morality of drinking alone. And I think, like, the same thing, you could say that drinking alone could be problematic without saying it's a sin, I think. Or if it's a sin, I don't think, it, it, I mean, provided you're not getting drunk, right, um, or drinking to excess, you could say that it's a sin for different reasons. Like maybe I'm avoiding certain things that I ought to be engaging in and doing because I'm just always stressed out and this is the way I'm coping. And again, I'm not talking about being drunk. So I think you could maybe say there's something there, maybe the sin of sloth or maybe some other sin. But in and of itself, while it might be less uh, conducive to whatever alcohol is supposed to do, I wouldn't say it's a sin unless you're, you're getting drunk. Um but I, I definitely heard people say things like you should never drink alone. And that might be good wisdom, but I still don't think you could say it's a sin, right? You'd still want to employ what Aquinas is saying when he's talking about whether alcohol is a sin or not. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I, there's the place I would start with saying, look, we're, we're reading these questions, this, these like what you're opening up right here in the Summa, like what section it is. It's, you know, in his major treatise on virtue and vice. And virtue and vice is really important to understand within the Catholic tradition as something that comes after law. It is what we are supposed to move into to be born out of. Whereas law is something that's directional, it's a guide, it's a teacher. Uh, It's not an absolute in and of itself. It doesn't end in and of itself. There's the creativity Mm. that comes with a heart that is captured by Christ, in love with Christ, and thus actually has once again assumed our proper role as as humans to be creative uh, in the way that we're living out the world and enacting love within it. That's maybe a bit too theoretical, but all to, all to say is that rules such as you should never drink alone are good as you're getting started, but ultimately we are supposed to graduate in the Christian life to the virtues, which is where the creative life is, where you know yourself, what you can handle, what's good for you, what actually is the best way of, of loving God and loving neighbor. And at that point, you, you are free. Um, there's still there's certain things that are just always sins, um, but at, at another point, something like drinking alone That's a great point, yeah. is, uh, is something that could be sinful for one, actually, because it is an occasion of sin, a real occasion of sin. Um, and if you have set yourself intentionally up into an occasion of sin that you know you're going to fail, and that is itself mortal sin. But, you know, I, it's not for all. Certainly not for all. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, that's fantastically put. Um, I don't have anything to add. Mm. I think, yeah, I would, I would agree. Yeah. The second question is a good one. And this kind of comes back to the point I keep making, but I don't know why I'm making it. I know there's a reason, but I can't grasp it yet. And it's this idea that we drink for a physiological response, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what. The, so this comes into this question about like buzzed versus drunk. Like, what do you mean by buzzed? Do by buzzed do you mean feel the effects of alcohol? Well, my point is that's why people drink alcohol. They drink alcohol to feel the effects of alcohol. That's that's why we drink alcohol. That's why. The Ecclesiastica says it's the joy, right, mm. of man. It's not because of the wonderful taste that it is. That's part of it. But if that's all it was, I don't think we'd be singing the praises of alcohol. I don't mm, think yeah. we don't we don't 
have a great celebration where we crack open the wine and all drink together because of this wonderful taste. That's part yeah. of it, but it's also the joy that it brings. The only place where something like that happens is a Coke commercial. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. The people yeah. are really into that. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. just on adverts, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's not like you have Coke parties. Yes, that's, <laughs> a, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there is something about, you know, as as alcohol, it is it has like a drug-like effect, you know, on a, in, or, um, it captures us, it brings us in. Caffeine does the same thing, you know, because it has an, a real effect on our body. Which, which is why if I sit down for a coffee with my wife mm -hmm. and if she's like, I'm going to have a glass of water, it's, we're both drinking beverages. It's the same thing. It's, it's not the same no. thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But we're sharing an experience. But, you know, it is funny because I'll never forget when I um, first started the drink with my, like, non catholic friends the a lot of them would not even make a distinction between buzzed and drunk like they would start drinking they're like this is nice we're I'm starting to feel drunk stuff like that hmm. i was like whoa no i'm i'm feeling great i'm just yeah. really happy to be with you you know yeah. and and i actually don't know why why that is if there's um whether or not it was because there wasn't a moral divide for them or or what i'm not sure but it actually does, or if there is like a, a further wisdom to it, which is your point, is that it's all kind of within a scale um, with it, that they see that. And the point of drinking is, okay, now we're there. You know, like we're, we're at this place. But w maybe what I would prefer to translate to is merriment. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, merriment mm -hmm. is much more wholesome of a word than the buzz. buzz yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I've had Catholics, uh, Catholic friends as well confuse maybe sometimes... Uh, feeling buzzed or yeah feeling merriment feeling the effects of the alcohol with being drunk you know uh I, I, there is an important distinction there mm -hmm. you know um and i i do i do prefer that as well i like that uh way of putting it feeling the merriment yeah. of it but i think this question is kind of this i'm not accusing this person of being legalistic but the question can be legalistic and it gets to your point about virtue being innate mm -hmm. because i think there is this desire for a law like, wouldn't it be great if the church just said, you may have two beers and after that it's a sin? Like, we want the clear <laughs> distinctions, and mm -hmm. you don't have that with alcohol necessarily. And, and mm -hmm. you brought that up earlier in your discussion about the first time your children drink as they grow older should be under the supervision and, and, the, and in, the, in the community of the family. And there's that initial feedback, that immediate feedback that you're getting mm -hmm. to kind of gauge whether you should continue or not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the whole, the whole, our whole life is actually one of movement towards God. Hopefully, it's a whole movement towards God, but it's also kind of stumbling, you know, there left and right. <laughs> you know, the the path is narrow, but you know, there's confession kind of bounces us back onto the narrow path as we go. And um, but we we can't we can't give up the fact that the that the narrow path is ultimately run upon through virtue and not through law. You know, you don't ultimately get to the pearly gates just because you followed the letter of the law well. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the whole Pharisees distinction. Like if, exactly if Christ it. says, if your righteousness doesn't exceed that of the Pharisees, like essentially you won't be saved kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like the law followers, it's like the law has to work its way down into the heart so that I live differently, think differently, look at the world differently. And uh, Andrew Jones did a great job at your conference, New Polity Conference, speaking mm. about this, where he's like, it's one thing to give your kids laws, like you should go to Mass on Sunday. But you also ideally want to come alongside them and talk about why you should want it mm -hmm. so that they actually want what they should want and avoid what they should avoid. It's one of the craziest things, like, is, I mean, as you know, as far as, like thinking about how I'm going to like raise, you yeah. know, my kids in, in the faith, because the one thing that you can't actually just hand to them is virtue. You know, you can you can put put them, give them the kind of the right habits, mm -hmm. um, but ultimately virtues are not habits. They're habitus, you know, according to St. Thomas, which are dispositions, qualities of the soul, orientations towards the movement of love and, and God and to one another. But really what you can't control about it is that they have to will the good mm. they actually have to will the good and the only person in control of their will is themselves and so the best we can do is, is set them up and then give the reasons for why the good is just so good yeah. you know and but but you know it's scary isn't it it is in it a is way, a bit terrifying as a parent. yeah 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 any any anything else coming through or? um no i have some thoughts i think that to your point i think that it's important to make the distinction that um, 
drunkenness is the sin, not seeking some of the effects like of alcohol. Right. That's you know, exactly the, right. Yeah. I think that that there's good in that, and you know, used rightly. So I think that that's why I think there are there are people who are kind of wary of that good to to a, a, a confusion of that as the the evil of alcohol is the effects. So like I like alcohol, but I don't like the fact that it's alcoholic. Mm. Kind of that idea. I think that that's just uh, sort of doesn't see deep enough, and, and is, it can be kind of like, mm. you know confused. Um, yeah. And then what you were talking about, uh, Jacob, um, I've been in situations that's the same thing too. And I don't know if this is exactly the distinction of, um, you know, drunk versus, you know, uh, I guess giddy buzzed. Um, uh, I don't think it's, it's super helpful in that distinction, but I've been around people who seem to be seeking to lose themselves and to get to that point of like, they're no longer like in charge of them themselves, if that makes sense. And that's what they're looking for. That's the experience they're looking for is like, loss of self versus mm. trying to, you know, seek something, I guess, in themselves or, or bring out something mm -hmm. good of themselves, but still, you know, totally be in control of themselves. It's escape, um, you know, it's ultimately mm -hmm. escape, you know, so it's a form of trying to, you know, abstract from what's actually going on in this real world. Um, no. I mean, it sounds kind of su super, like, commonplace, actually, but just think about how many places in life where we're trying to escape from reality. You know, and 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 once we escape from reality, we've actually escaped from all the things that God has infused Himself with in this sacramental universe. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we're ultimately escaping Him when we do that. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Well, I think we're almost done. What do you reckon? Cool. Yeah, there's not too many comments coming through. This has been a pleasure, real mm -hmm. joy. Thanks for joining us, and yeah, thanks guys for bringing some whiskey over. <laughs> Dude, this is we should awesome. do one taste test for you. We got to do, do that yet. Okay. All right. We're, so what we need is to glass. get. No, it's not. All right, I'll leave. The, I'll, I'm still very warm. I'll leave the room and stand <laughs> by the window, and we'll, we'll have a discussion yeah. about what we'll do. Just we, a, dro a wee drop. A wee drop. A wee, just, <laughs> just a wee drop. Now, but we gotta sing the Scotsman song. Oh yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's let's do. We'll this. save ring we, making. All right, for you wanna head time. out and we'll we'll choose some something. This is good too because he doesn't he doesn't know what we're gonna do. All right. So don't look at us you though. Need, you need it. Are you gonna pick like a nice one versus? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we won't choose too mid range. That wouldn't be the point. Yeah, I think we should get like one of the best and like. What do you think? Well, that one's really distinctive. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't taste this one. Let me just. Just, just have a drink out of the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe that. I mean, this is. This hasn't been on. Yeah, there. we could do that. All right, let's try that. What should we do? Those two, like that one and that one. Should we do that? Yeah. Or should we try my favorite, Echo Spring? <laughs> no, we've had that too much today. He'll know it. He won't know it. <laughs> <laughs> it is really light, you know. What we should do too is so we don't get mixed up. We'll put the good one in the little glass and the crap one in the big one. That sounds like a parable Jesus told. Yeah. <laughs> a wine Almost, skins or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, but see, we got we got to pair that with a great one then, if we're going to do that, because that one's a. Uh, this is this is uh, that's mid range. What a twenty eight dollar bottle. Should we do it with this one, my favorite. <laughs> no, let's <laughs> yeah, not let's, let's not use this one. That's a lie. All right, uh, what about that one here? This is going to be so boring for the people at home. <laughs> I mean, they're all gone. Oh, I bet uh, there's just that one guy. It's now, like I actually had all of these. <laughs> all right, so now we know what's what. Um, Rob, right. are you able to come in and not look at what you're drinking? Yeah. Because of the... All right, you can come in. Oh, oh dear <laughs> Lord. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is it on me? It's on you. It's a little crooked, though. Just so people know, he shut his eyes and I walked really directly into the, the camera. <laughs> Neil, how's that look? He was you can just leave that there. I'll fix it once you walk. Okay. <laughs> he was <laughs> honest. Please don't try to fix it. Oh, God. <laughs> in my... Yeah, in my honesty and innocence, I whacked the camera, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, my eyes are closed. My right, eyes are closed. Here we go. Na, 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 na. Do I keep them closed the whole time? Na, 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 na. Now you have to drink them both at the same time and, and tell, tell the us difference. which side of your throat tastes better. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this would be a perfect way to end this video if I was right the whole way through. Yeah, <laughs> right. What, what if you weren't right here? Then everybody's going to question the last few hours. Yeah. <laughs> the brands. It's over.
What time is it actually? <laughs> it is oh quarter past ten. Oh, that's pretty good. Mm. Again, I just want to point out that this isn't an easy decision for Rob. <laughs> Even Rob. I've only tasted one so far, Matt. Okay. He's <laughs> really enjoying it. Oh, really? That's all you've done? Oh, okay. I smell it. Uh, in that case, I take that back. I just don't want to lose. Notes. I'm competitive. I don't want to lose. Listen, listen to it. Put your ear in it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Swish yeah. it around. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. Uh, that's what the clinking is for. You know, you engage all the senses. The smell, the wow. taste, the sight, and then... That's interesting. Yep. Look at that. It's nice. Now, am I allowed to look now or not? I mean, no, I, no. I'm afraid you'll look at the colors and no. Here, give, give them to me and now you can open your eyes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So the the, the Glencairn glass, that, that tulip one, um, it, was, it was a little harsh, a little bit... I don't even know. Actually, Jacob's gonna have to tell us. I didn't see what he did. Am I, I? I don't know if I would just. I don't know if I would know between any of these. The one was the first one was sweet. If I can, I'll close my eyes. I'll taste again. Which one's better? Which one do you like Th more? That's the one you wanted, right? That no, the, the other one. Oh, you want this one? I have no idea. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I would guess. All right. So that's cool, right? So I'm right, and that's the point <laughs> of this video. But that was Echo Spring. Which one? This one versus four small roses. batch four roses. This is four roses. I don't know which is which. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is four roses. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Four Once you know it, again, it's the it's the suggestion. Yeah. So the point of this video has been to go out and buy yourself a nice bottle of Echo Spring. You know, maybe who sponsored this episode. <laughs> <laughs> what if they did this whole time? Yeah, you didn't even laughing. know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, give it, give it a, like your your point a good point. You know, come up with something profound on the spot right now. <laughs> My well, I mean, I mean, no, there's no profound point. It's just to say that it's taste a, is something to cultivate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's it's all it's all marketing. I think it's all marketing. Like all these bourbon companies have their little story about. Why their bourbon is superior and unique to? Did he leave? Is he that depressed that he didn't get it? <laughs> and and we'll it's, just, it's, it's it's totally it's totally marketing. I mean, this is this beautiful mm. four rose bottle. It's gloriously done. That sticker is delightful. It has the, the yeah. kind of outward sort of imprint of the roses versus bloody Echo Spring, on which the word liter <laughs> has a larger font than Echo Spring on the neck. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, so there you go. That's that's a solution. That is a major market. Hey, to those who are watching right now, just as we wrap up, let us know what you thought about today's show because we've been thinking about doing some more long form round table discussions like this. We don't plan on drinking every time. This is like you know, this is unique to this, but we're thinking about having different people around Steubenville coming on and just having kind of a you know, three of us, four of us just chatting. So if you like this format, not necessarily the discussion about alcohol, but just the format, let us know in the description below. Sweet. Any final words before we wrap up? Prost. <laughs> Nostrovia, yeah. Nostrovia. That's a fun way to say cheers. What's yeah. that one you said? I don't know. What do you say in uh, the Arabic language? Sahtain. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. I love the filter on the roof. Lachayim. Oh, that's nice. To yeah. life, yeah. Yeah, that's great. In Australia, yeah. we say cheers. <laughs> no R, just cheers. <laughs> All right. Thanks, mate. All right. Thanks, Thanks, guys. guys. That was cool. awesome. Thanks.